What's up, guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei back with Reborn as Tetsuya Shiba in DXD. Part 4. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video, share, and leave a comment. This really helps with the algorithm. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. Also, I have set up a Patreon account, consider joining to support the channel and for more exclusive content. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. After Tetsuya returned home from watching the death show he directly went to bed without doing anything else. The next day he told about little incident to his teammates, and all of them had some worries about that matter. They all knew that the sacred gear that Issei possessed was the boosted gear, a mid-tier longinus, and knowing that magic works on how strong one's imagination is they all were worried that Issei will come after them with his pervy techniques that he will make in future. Tetsuya knew that it was surely going to happen, so he decided to use Kurumi's ability to know what a person is feeling towards them to make different anti-lust items. These items were able to notify the wearer when someone was feeling lust indicated towards them and notify them in advance. He also added a function which added a thin barrier able to defend them from those techniques and also can be used as a defense mechanism against various attacks. Though this function required to infuse their magic power in the accessory and the more magic infused, the more strong and durable the barrier. This was best help that he could do for their safety. He even tried to make anti-magic accessories for them, but it turned out that their own magic could not be used if they wear those. They also felt lightheaded when they tried to wear them, so Tetsuya had no choice other than using these defense accessories. He was also confident on their skill that they would be able to send him flying before Issei is able to touch them. The next day he they all went to school and things went normal for all of them, Tetsuya asked Drake if everything was fine on his end. To which Drake replied that Issei was thinking that all that he went through was a dream. And just like that the day ended without anything unnatural happening. The day after that was what Tetsuya expected the whole student body was in uproar, as the number one beauty of the academy was coming along with the number one pervert, making all of them shocked to no extent. Tetsuya and the others didn't even care about them, and just like every day all of them went to their classes. In fact they all could say that it was a good thing that none of the students were bothering them and were interested in the beauty and the perv. Later that day Kiba came to their class, causing a mass uproar from the girls and scowl from the boys except Tetsuya. Tetsuya looked at him at waved his hand, to which he replied with one as well. He then came closer to Issei and said, Ria's Gremory Senpai is asking for you. Issei who was now scowling on seeing him suddenly got surprised and said, Oh, so you are the one who is supposed to fetch me. Kiba nodded his head and then looked at Tetsuya with an anticipatory gaze. Tetsuya looked at him and sighed and said, Want me to come as well? Kiba only nodded his head in response. Tetsuya stood up from his seat and said, Then let's go then. He then sent an telepathic message to his team and said, Go home without me for today, I will meet the princess first, or else she will not stop bothering. They all agreed with it, and then Tetsuya left with the two of them making all the girls who saw them curses say for being with Kiba and Tetsuya. All three of them walked for a while and made some small talk on the way. Issei was starting to feel out of place as both Tetsuya and Kiba were in another league compared to him and was wanting to go back, but still went with them. Soon all of them reached an on and worn out mansion, which was considered as the old school area of the academy. Tetsuya looked at the building and then said, Kiba it may be rude but, can you assure me that this building will not topple on us once we go inside? Kiba looked at him and then said, don't worry it is only like this from the outside, but from the inside it is completely fine. Tetsuya nodded his head and then all of them entered inside the building. They walked in a hallway, and Tetsuya's gaze fell on a door which said keep out. So that's where Gaspar resides. Thought Tetsuya and then all of them entered a room. Once they entered the room Tetsuya saw someone familiar sitting on the sofa eating some sweets. Tetsuya waved his hand and said, Surprise seeing you here, Kaneko-chan. Kaneko who heard him got surprised and then turned her head. Once she saw Tetsuya standing there waving at her. She gave a curt nod and said, I am surprised as well Tetsuya-senpai. 
Titsaya smiled and went towards her and sat beside her. Kaneko looked at him and then gave some of her sweets to him, and then both of them sat silently while eating the sweets. While they were doing that Kiba was explaining some things to Issei, and when Issei saw that there was a shower in the room, and the outline of Ria's was visible through the curtain he started perving around. Kaneko saw his expression and said, Perv Titsaya looked at her and said, Leave him alone, he is not going to stop anytime soon. Kaneko nodded her head, and both of them again started eating sweets. Issei who heard them felt disheartened but suddenly Akeno came from inside and then started introducing herself to Issei. She then saw that Tetsuya was sitting along with Kaneko, and when she saw both of them eating sweets, she got a bit surprised and said, Kaneko is sharing her sweets, that's new. Tetsuya looked at her and said, Nice to meet you Himajima-san. I am Tetsuya Shiba. Akeno bowed and said, Nice to meet you as well Shiba-kun soon the red-head princess came out of the shower room. Her gaze then fell on Tetsuya, and she got a bit surprised on seeing him there. But what intrigued her more was, Kaneko sharing her sweets, now that's a first. Tetsuya looked at Kaneko and said, looks like you are famous here for not sharing your sweets. Kaneko blushed a bit and started eating faster. Tetsuya chuckled and started petting her head as she looked cute at that time, and Kaneko started purring unconsciously. Riaz then introduced herself and Tetsuya did the same, and then she started Tetsuya didn't listen to her and was focusing on petting Kaneko who was somehow sitting on his lap. Tetsuya kept patting Kaneko on her head, and everyone was looking at him. Tetsuya looked back at them and asked, what? Riaz looked at him and said, aren't you surprised by all this, after all I just told you that we all are devils. Kaneko who was enjoying the head pat looked at him as well to notice his expression, she was worried that Tetsuya and his team would stop interacting with her if they knew that she was a devil. Tetsuya looked at Ria's with a neutral expression and said, what you mean to say that I should react because you say that you are a devil, then listen this carefully, I am a human. Now start reacting. All of them who heard him were dumbfounded except Issei who found that funny and was coming controlling his laugh. Ria's came out of her stupor and said, no, we really are devils. Tetsuya said, I am saying the truth as well, I am a human and a male one at that. Ria's got a tick mark on her forehead and said, I can prove to you that we are devils. And all of them brought their wings out, making Issei surprised. Tetsuya looked at Kaneko's wings and careezed it making a jolt of electricity pass through her body. She looked at Tetsuya and said, SS Senpai that the tickles. Tetsuya who saw her expression suddenly blushed and stopped touching her wings. He then looked at Ria's and said, I can prove myself as well, but sorry I am not into exhibitionism. At his words of them and even his aide blushed. Ria's was about to say something, but Akeno interjected her and said, then why don't we go in that room, and I can check whether you are saying the truth or not. And licked her lips. At her words Kaneko hugged Tetsuya and said, Senpai will not go with you. Akeno placed a hand on her cheek and said, Ara Ara, Kaneko wants to join as well, that's very naughty of you Kaneko. Kaneko blushed and immediately stopped hugging him. Riaz looked at her peerage and said, Stop your flirting Akeno, I am discussing something right now. She then looked at Tetsuya and said, Are you not surprised, not even a bit? Tetsuya looked at her and said, What do you expect me to do? Haven't you seen me hanging around with Sona and her peerage? Do you think that I don't know who you both are heiresses, heir of Gremory Pillar? At his words all of them except Issei were hit by realization, and all of them retracted their wings and were feeling ashamed. Tetsuya looked at Kaneko and said, and you don't have to worry, we will not hate you just because you are a devil. Kaneko blushed and nodded her head and then started eating her sweets. Riaz then became all smug and said, then it is mock things easier for myself Tetsuya I want you to joy, before she was able to finish Tetsuya said, not interested in joining you. Riaz who heard him said, sorry, I guess I heard you wrong can you repeat it? Tetsuya looked at her and said, I don't want to join your peerage. Riaz who heard him was surprised and used her devil's charm and said, why not you can even make your own harem if you become a high class devil. Tetsuya looked at her with an expression which said really. He then said, I don't need that, haven't you seen me coming to the school daily with all my girls, why would I require to become a devil just for a harem? Riaz was dumbfounded by that, and everyone was looking at her holding their laughter. Riaz started to turn red in embarrassment, but then she pointed her finger at Tetsuya and said, power, you can get powerful if you become a devil. 
Titsaya looked at her and sighed. He is then looked at Kiba and said, Kiba what is the score of our sparring session? Kiba thought for a while and said, I guess we have sparred 25 times with all of them being your wins. Kiba was not depressed by it, in fact he was happy that he was able to spar with someone strong. Riaz who heard him was surprised once again and was thinking what to do. Suddenly an idea came to her mind and she said, then if you are really strong, why don't you have a bout with my peerage, and if we win you will join my peerage. And smirked. Titsaya looked at her and said, and what will I get if I win? This made the smirk disappear from her face. She got into Lima on what to give him as nothing came to her mind, she thought of giving him authority in the town, but realized that Sona can give him that as well. He gazed then fell on Kaneko and she said, you can have Kaneko to yourself for a whole day of course you cannot do anything sexual to her without her permission. Kaneko looked at her and said, president sold me. Titsaya didn't wait for long and said, deal accepted. Kaneko was shocked once again and looked at Titsaya. Titsaya looked at her and said, what you don't want to spend time with me. Kaneko blushed and said, I I it is not that, I don't want to spend time with you, I am just shocked that's all. Titsaya smiled and then said, then let's get this show on the road. All of them were now in an area enclosed within a barrier around it to prevent the involvement of any third party. In front of him were the whole orc except Issei and Gasper. Titsaya was holding Kanshu and Bakuya in both of his hands and was waiting for them to finish their planning. After they were done planning they looked at Titsaya and asked, you ready? Titsaya nodded his head and Kiba immediately launched at him. Titsaya didn't move from his place and Riaz thought that Titsaya was scared. Kiba found that it as well but knew that Titsaya was not an opponent who would get scared by something like that. Kiba got close to him and then slashed him with his full power. Titsaya who looked at the sword coming his way slashed back and said, full counter. And Kiba was suddenly blown away with a slash wound on his body, making all those watching him shocked. Riaz and the others got serious, and Kaneko cracked her knuckles and started running towards him. Titsaya waited for her to approach him as well, and just when she was about to punch him, he pushed her elbow a bit, blocking the flow of chakra in her hand, making it go instantly numb. This shocked Kaneko, and she was about to punch him with her other hand, but before she was able to Titsaya flicked her forehead, making her fly away and crash into the kiba. Titsaya then looked towards Riaz, but was not able to spot a keno. Titsaya then suddenly felt something approaching him, and he immediately jumped to his side. Oh don't run away, let me punish you for a bit. Titsaya looked towards the source of the voice and saw a keno flying in the air. Titsaya saw her charge some electricity in her hand and then fire it towards him. Titsaya also didn't wait and slashed at the thunder approaching him and said, full counter Akeno saw her own thunder fired back at her and then immediately moved away, but still some of it grazed her. She then looked at the ground but was not able to find Titsaya. Behind you Akeno heard the voice and turned her head only to find Titsaya who has his hands joined and both index and middle fingers of his hand covered in electricity. Titsaya then said, secret lightning to Jutsu. Thousand years of shocking death and then poked a Keno making a large amount of electricity pass through her body. All the others who saw her unconsciously grabbed their butts. The Keno then started falling while saying, Suo Gud. Titsaya looked at her but immediately schooled his head. He looked at Riaz and said, so gonna attack now princess. Riaz who heard him pointed her finger at him and said, you will pay for injuring my adorable servants and then started firing her power of destruction at him. Titsaya threw his swords in a way that they acted as boomerangs, but to Riaz who saw that thought that he surrendered. Titsaya then pointed his hands in the attack's direction and fired an energy wave at it. Riaz who saw the wave was surprised, but thought that her attack was stronger and was not bothered by it, but suddenly the swords that Titsaya threw slashed her making her scream in pain and crouch down. She then looked up only to find the blue energy wave that Titsaya fired to come towards her. She closed her eyes, but the energy wave traveled by her only a few millimeters away from her head and strike one of the outer parts of the building, and immediately the whole building was destroyed. All of them look at the power behind Titsaya's attack and was scared by it. The most surprised by it was Riaz who was just a bit away from death. Titsaya looked at the building and said, oops, looks like I didn't held back enough. Anyway looks like I win. All of them were then brought out of the stupor and was looking at Titsaya with awe and horror. 
A green magic circle then appeared in Tetsuya's hand, and he rotated it anti-clockwise, and the whole building was restored. He then looked at the injured peerage and asked, want me to heal you? And all of them nodded their heads. Tetsuya then went towards them with the magic circle still activated, and then one by one, healed each of them with his time reversal. At Rhea's turn Tetsuya looked at her and said, so was I powerful enough? Rhea's who heard him glared at him and said, you, your attack could have killed me. Tetsuya simply said, but it didn't. Didn't you notice that you fell down just as the attack passed by you? It was all planned. Rhea's who was not satisfied with it started to bicker. Tetsuya who was starting to get annoyed her said, that's enough. And then used his time reversal to turn her into a four-year-old child. All of the other team members were surprised by it and had their eyes popping out. Rhea's look at her body of a child and was covered in her school uniform which didn't fit her anymore. She then looked at Tetsuya and said, what did you do to me? Turn me back this instant. Tetsuya then looked at the child Rhea's and then suddenly an idea came to his mind. He then snapped his fingers, and she was immediately covered in clothes of her size. He then picked her up and before anyone was able to ask what he was doing and teleported away. Soon he was in front of the school building. He then held Rhea's in her hands who kept on punching and kicking him in order to free herself. Soon he came close to a group of girls and said, the group of girls then turned around, and all of them got excited on seeing Tetsuya and said, how can we help you Tetsuya-kun? We will try our best to do it. Tetsuya smiled at them making all nf them Hokaya Kaya. He then looked at Rias and said, this girl here is most probably Rias' sister and came here to meet her, but on her way here some perverts harassed her and now she is scared of boys, so can you please take care of her till someone from her family comes. They all looked at the girl in Tetsuya's arms and immediately took her from his hands and said, how cute Tetsuya smiled at Rias who was looking at him with a hateful gaze. He then looked at the girls and said, why don't you show her around the school? They all nodded and then started showing her around the school. Soon the girls came in front of the cosplay club room, and being an attacker Rhea's eyes shined. The girls though that Rhea's liked to nine men decided to dress her up. And ideas came to his mind, and he took out his phone and called Serzich's. Je then said, hey listen to this, it is very important. Come to my location just this instant or you will not get a similar opportunity for your whole life. And ended the call. Soon Serzich's came to his location, and Tetsuya immediately turned him invisible along with himself and said, just wait for that door to open. Serzich's thought that there was an enemy coming out of the door and was ready to attack anytime, but when the door opened he saw a child Rias wearing a princess outfit. Serzich's was shocked on seeing her and was about to ask about that to Tetsuya and looked at him. But when he looked at Tetsuya, he was holding a small camera. Serzich's looked at the camera and thought, the questions can wait for a while, taking Rhea Tan's pictures are more important. And took camera from him and started taking her pictures in different outfits. After all that ordeal was over Tetsuya and Serzich's became visible once again and went towards her. On seeing Serzich's there Rias got shocked and was now embarrassed on seeing him there, but still went with him so as to escape from the girls. Once they were away from them she looked at Serzich's and said, what are you doing here on E-chan? Serzich's who saw her asking cutely said, ah, I miss this expression so much. Tetsuya then looked at him and said, enough about that now the payment for the pictures. Serzich's nodded and said, is one million fine with you? Tetsuya nodded and thought, 1 million for some pictures of his sister, he is a very big sis con. Serzich's signed a check and gave it to Tetsuya. Rias then asked him about the pictures, and Serzich's showed her all the pictures that he took making her more and more embarrassed. Serzich's also explained how he knew Tetsuya, and then he went back, and Tetsuya turned her back to normal. Soon all of them were back in the orc club room laughing on the whole thing that took place there in school. Rias was all red with embarrassment and Akeno who saw her king like that went to prepare some tea for all of them. Soon she came with some tea for all of them and gave them a cup. Rias then said, well after all the things that we went through I would like to welcome our new member. All of them then looked at Issei, except for Tetsuya and Kaneko, who were both eating sweets along with the tea. Kiba then looked at Issei and said, welcome to the team Issei, I am happy that another male joined the group, and all of them then took a sip of their tea, except for Issei. 
Issa looked confused and said, What do you mean male, I am a 100% biologically certified girl. At that moment all the teacups except Issa's fell on the ground. After Issa's declaration the whole club room got silent. Titsaya's brain was not able to process what he just heard. He immediately used his x-ray vision to check his her body and he was not able to find any sausage. He then thought, wait a minute from what I can remember the SA that I met when I was young was most definitely a male, I have seen his whiner when we were changing on our trip to a water park. So how does this SA is a female? He then looked at SA and asked, SA when the last time we met when we were young, you were most certainly a Titsaya who was dumbfounded by this knowledge asked Drake, Drake did you know about this? Drake looked at him and asked, about what? Titsaya then looked at Drake and said, didn't you knew about that before? Drake looked at him and said, how could I know that he she has not yet manifested my sacred gear yet, and I am not able to talk or check his her body in this state. I was only able to see what you showed me through your eyes not my own. Titsaya nodded his head and then left the space. Riaz then asked, then why are you wearing, Titsaya nodded his head. Asami then said, well the problem began in those days, my brother who was interested in breasts and harem, started his antics when he was young, and I being his age, also got interested in all those things, and started to doing all those pervert things till to the point that it became my nature, and started to get involved with those things as well. She then stopped for a while and then said, well things were getting fine for some years, but after that when my body started to get mature my brother sometimes looked at me with leakrous eyes. Though he tries very hard to not do that since he had a good heart, but his habits got the better of him from time to time. She had a sad look in her eyes and then said, I started to get conscious of him, and tried to live in the appearance of a boy, I cut my hair, wrapped up my breasts using bandages and wore boy's clothes, so as to not being stared by him. She then became neutral and said, well that's that not a big deal, to sum it up, it can be said that, I don't want to live as a boy, but I had to live as a guy to live in the same house as my perverted brother, as I didn't had any relatives who lived nearby, and my parents could not afford me living in an apartment alone. Though it is ironic to say that I like to peep like a pervert, but not being stared by one. All of them then smiled at her. But then Titsaya said, then that means you went on a date with that fallen angel, because you are into girls. Asami then showed him a smug smile and said, why should you choose when you can have both, I swing both ways, and I have to say that you have quite a nice body under those clothes that you are wearing. Titsaya who hurt her looked at her with a dumbfounded expression and didn't said anything. Kiba then asked, then why does the whole school think that you are a boy, your gender must be written in the school documents right? Asami gave a wry smile and said, you see both my brother and I applied for this school, but by mistake our father interchanged our form and genders got changed, since the rest of the things were similar, we didn't gave it much thought and submitted them as it was. Though my brother was not able to enter as only one seat was left. And all the others call me Hayuadu I don't bother explain them, and both my friends already knew about me as all four of us including my brother were in the same middle school. So yeah, it's my first time explaining all this. Titsaya nodded his head and said, Well princess, do you have any idea how to help your peerage member? Riaz gave a nod and looked at Asami with a smile and said, Asami do you want to move in the dorm where all the female members of my peerage are living? You can freely live as a girl there and you don't have to pay any rent. Then Titsaya said, And if it's about your gender problem in school I can ask Sona to do something about that. Asami who heard them smiled happily and said, I will like to do that, let me ask my parents about this first. Riaz and Titsaya nodded their heads in approval. Suddenly Asami was grabbed from behind by Akeno who said, well let's see how outrageous your body is to even make your own brother lose control. And then pulled her inside a room. Soon both of them came out of the room, and Asami was dressed in the female uniform. Titsaya looked at her and his first thoughts were, how the hell were some bandages were able to hold those weapons hidden. They are at least as big if not bigger than Rhea's. He then calmed down and thought, putting that anime logic aside, I have to say she does look hot. Asami who noticed his gaze blushed and said, don't stare at me like that I am still not used to wear these type of clothes. After that Rhea's asked Asami to try and manifest her sacred gear, and to Titsaya's surprise, she was able to manifest her twice critical on the spot. Titsaya then turned to Drake and asked, 
how is her potential? Drake then said, even though we both thought that she was not that powerful, it looks like that it will change soon. She seems to be fairly talented as well, to be able to manifest my sacred gear at the first try is very impressive, but there were a lot of users who were able to manifest the second and even the third form at the first try so. Yeah she is Talente and will surely become strong if trained the right way. Drake looked at Tetsuya with an anticipatory gaze. Tetsuya looked at him and said, what? Do you want me to train her? Drake then said, well why not, you trained your team as well right, so think of it just like that. Tetsuya said, dude I trained them because they were my team, so their responsibility is on me as well. Drake then grumbled and said, then just think of it as helping your friend. Tetsuya looked at him with a deadpan expression and said, aren't you asking too much my friend Drake and Tetsuya, then had an argument for quite a while, and finally Tetsuya said, fine just stop, I will only train her once a week, and even if she complained once then the deal is off. Drake looked at him and said, stingy. Tetsuya had tick marks on his forehead, and he placed him in a Tsukuyomi of him being fucked by Albion. Tetsuya then came back to reality where only a few seconds have passed and said, Isami, I just had an argument with some friend of mine, and you will be training with me every weekend to survive in this world. Just remember complain once and the deal is off and no, you have no choice in this matter. Before she could even say a word Tetsuya already made it clear that she had to train with him. Riaz looked annoyed and said, hey she is my servant, you don't have any right to order her around. Tetsuya who was already annoyed by the argument he just had with Drake, looked at Riaz with a cold glare and said, shut up or I will turn you into a lowly and throw you in a group of lolicans. Riaz shuddered on looking at his eyes and hearing his threat, and nodded her head. Asaki then looked at him and said, then leet feel your body after training as you are making me do it forcefully. Tetsuya looked at her and said, oh have no problems with it, just remember that take the permission of others, or you would be up for a whole world of pain. After that Tetsuya went back to his home leaving the members behind to let them do the devil work. Tetsuya came home and then explained them all the things that happened in the orc, and just like he thought all of them were shocked that Issei Asami was a girl. The next day he talked to Sona who cleared all the problems in her documents, and Asami also got the permission to move into the dorm, and started coming to school in her girly form, making the whole school go speechless. She also informed Tetsuya that she was able to defeat the fallen angel by boosting her power, making Tetsuya surprised. Tetsuya then came to realize that it wasn't the Anime world, and the plot armor that Issei had in the original series might not be with Asami. He was also interested in her power as in the original series it showed that Issei was only able to beat the fallen angel because of the magic energy released by the manifestation of the sacred gear. And here Asami was able to defeat her and even able to use her boost on her first fight. Tetsuya who now got the permission to go to the orc club room also started to go there from time to time whenever he felt bored as Drake was mostly asleep because the awakening took a toll on his body. He told Tetsuya that he would be able to recover soon, but he required plenty of rest before that. In the club room he phased through Gasper's door making him scared of him at first, but soon he started to feel comfortable with Tetsuya's presence and started to interact with him. Both of them usually spent time to play games together, and Tetsuya would also make him some food from time to time. Riaz and the crew were also able to exterminate all the fallen angels in the town, as Asami had already gone through one of Tetsuya's hell's training, making her awaken the second form of the boosted gear, which made Drake conscious as well. And the thing which surprised Tetsuya the most was that Asami was able to boost 15 times, just as she awakened it, though Drake said that it was because of her training she went through before awakening him. Asami was also able to communicate with Drake and came to know who made the deal with Tetsuya. Though she didn't complain too much about it as she got strong as well. Asami also started to get close with Tetsuya's team as well, and they too had a good opinion of her. Though at first they were a bit conscious of her perverted nature, they soon opened up after knowing that Asami had a good personality and was a good friend to them. She even got the permission after much effort to feel Tetsuya's body. Riaz and her peerage also met with Tetsuya's team, and she even tried to recruit them only to be shot down immediately. Though she felt sad she shrugged it off soon. Right now the orc club room is filled with both Riaz's peerage and Tetsuya's team, happily chatting with each other. 
Asami was sitting beside Tatsaya, while both of them were sitting there completely bored, as the rest of them were busy talking to each other. Asami looked at Tatsaya and said, Tatsaya go on a date with me. Tatsaya looked at her and said, Asami you have been asking this question for the past one hour, and I told you already I am not free. Asami then looked at the ceiling and said, then tell me when you would be free. Tatsaya didn't say anything and remained silent for a while. Soon a thought came to his mind and he asked, Asami mind if I ask you a question. Asami looked at him and said, if it is about my three sizes then before she was able to finish Tatsaya said, no, it's not about that. What I want to ask you is, I haven't seen you with your fellow trio and peak in the girls changing room for a while, why is that? Asami looked at him and said, well since I was able to come to school as a girl, I was able to change in the girls locker room as well. So at first I was able enjoying the sight of all the boobs and butts. But after a while I stopped craving for them, looks like I was only interested in them because my brother taught me, and also I used to live as a boy for quite some time, and now I don't even feel anything on seeing Rhea's naked in the shower. And since I no longer need to peep on the girls, our trip broke apart, and now it is only a duo. Tatsaya then looked at her and said, then does that mean that you are not into girls and were only interested because you were living as a boy? Asami nodded her head and said, looks like that, but don't worry even though I have lost my previous motivation, I am now achieving for a different goal. Tatsaya smirked and then said, what peep into the men's locker room? Asami then said, I would be really happy if that were to happen, but unlike girls who only beat you for peeping, there is a chance that I could be violated by the boys, though I don't think that they would be much of a threat that devils cannot deal through. Tatsaya nodded his head and said, that might be possible. So what is your new goal? Asami smiled and said, to make you take my virginity. At her words all the girls there glared at Asami making her shiver because of the killing intent aimed at her. Asami then looked at them and said, now interested to talk to me huh? Listen well all of you, I am going to make Tatsaya take my virginity, and maybe can even take his virginity as well. The atmosphere suddenly got tense, and all the girls started to glare at each other, as if all of them were going to backstab each other at any moment. Tatsaya didn't bother in their matter and decided to let them settle this on their own. He then felt the Citri group come towards the club room and thought, so it's finally time for getting the familiars. Soon the door of the club room opened and what Sona and her peerage felt was a feeling of dread spread throughout their body. Kiba and Tatsaya were sitting in one corner of the room and were looking at the scene in front of them. Tatsaya then looked at Sona and said, Yo, so Tan, Tsubaki nice meeting you here. Sona and Tsubaki got out of their thoughts and looked at Tatsaya and asked, What happened here why are all of them glaring at each other like they are going to kill each other? Tatsaya said with a neutral face, they are arguing about who is going to take my virginity. Sona and Tsubaki who heard him blanked out for a while and then joined the others in their glaring war as well. Tatsaya and Kiba didn't gave it a fuck and continued to drink some tea, while Tatsaya brought some snacks that would go along with the tea. He then looked at the rest of the Sona's peerage and asked, wanna join us? They all looked at each other and then nodded and went to sit where Tatsaya and Kiba were sitting. After a while when the glaring war seemed to have cooled down a bit Tatsaya said, Sona quit wasting time and tell why you came here. Sona who heard him suddenly realized that she had not done the thing that she came for, and the others realized it as well. Saji seemed to be offended by how casually Tatsaya called Sona stood up from his seat and pointed his finger at Tatsaya and said, who the hell are you to call president like that huh punk? Are the devils of the Gremory family that rude? Tatsaya looked at him and said, well looks like you have forgotten me, but for your information, I am not a devil. Saji ignored what Tatsaya said earlier and only heard that he was not a devil. He smirked and said, huh, you are a human then doesn't that mean that you are weaker than me? Tatsaya just smiled, but then Saji fell on the ground and was experiencing a lot of pressure on his body and he was unable to stand up. Tatsaya then went towards him and crouched down and said, looks like you have to be educated again huh, shitty blonde punk. When Saji heard that name he suddenly realized something. He then moves his head with great difficulty and looked at Tatsaya and said, that cool aura that you are releasing, combined with the cold eyes that can make anyone pale with just a gaze. Don't tell me. Tatsaya smiled and said, looks like you remember me now, huh. 
Saji widened his eyes and said, Tatsaya and Nikki Tatsaya removed the pressure that Saji was experiencing, and Saji immediately went into Doggy's position and said, Forgive me for my impudence Aniki, it will not happen again. Everyone was looking at both of them with a look of surprise. Sona then came forward and said, Do you two know each other? Tatsaya then looked at Saji and said, Your king is asking something? Saji then immediately stood up and said, Yes this great person who is standing in front of all of you is none other than Tatsaya Aniki. Both of us used to study in the same school when we were young, and he was referred as Tatsaya Aniki by everyone, because of the superiority that he had over us. All of them were dumbfounded by the introduction that Saji gave, and Tatsaya said, Only speak about what is asked of you. Saji bowed and said, I am sorry Aniki. Tatsaya nodded and then said, Anyway, leaving that matter aside, it's nice to meet you once again. Saji looked up with a look of admiration and said, It should be me who should be happy to meet you again Aniki. I hope that you take care of me from now on as well. Sona and the others looked at both of them for a while, and then said, Anyway, Riaz I came here today to introduce my new pawn Saji Genshiru to you and your peerage. Saji who heard her came forward. Asami who saw him said, A pawn, just like me. Saji looked at Asami and said, Sorry sweetheart I am not a normal pawn like you, I have consumed four pawns. Tatsaya then looked at him and said, What you mean to say is that your sacred gear took four pawns, right? Saji who heard him twitched his lips and said, Aniki, just let me look cool for a bit. Sona then said, Saji don't behave like that before you know your facts. The one who is in front of you consumed all eight pawns. Saji's eyes were popping out when he heard Sona he then said, all eight pawns are you kidding me? He then remembered what Tatsaya just told him and said, but it only means that your sacred gear took all eight pawn right. Asami snorted and said, even if that was true, it doesn't change the fact that I have more worth than you, and don't think that you are better than me, I have survived Tatsaya's you will surely want to die, but you cannot die training sessions, so I am stronger than you without a doubt. Tatsaya who heard the name of the training session that he gave her, twitched his lips and decided to make her training harsher than before. Riaz then said, what is your real objective Sona, I cannot think that the ever so busy student council president will only come here to introduce her peerage. Sona adjusted her glasses and said, my how perceptive of you, yes I didn't came here just to introduce my peerage to yours, I came here to inform you that we would be going to the familiar forest to get Saji a familiar for himself. Riaz then said, oh, but I was planning on taking Asami as well to let her get herself a familiar. Sona then said, that might be a problem, the familiar master only takes one family every month. They both then discussed to play a game of tennis just like they did in the Anime and left the room. Asami then looked at everyone and asked, well what is a familiar? Riaz then looked at her and then explained her all about familiars and what all they do, all of them then took out their familiars, and all those who didn't had one looked at them intently except for Tatsaya. Tatsaya then said, it is good that you all like the familiars, but before that can you please take them off me? Tatsaya said that as all the familiars were clinging to him. An eagle and a bat on each of his shoulder, a wit cat on his head and some imps clinging to his shirt. All of them then laughed at his condition, and then all of them sent back their familiars. Later that day most of the school was present around a tennis court because just like in the Anime, both the devil heirs were going to play a match, so as to decide who would be going to familiar forest. Tatsaya who was with the group girls who were wearing a tennis outfit for the match. Sona saw him looking at them and decided to make him fluster a bit and asked, what Tatsaya, having lewd thoughts on seeing us like that. Tatsaya looked at her with the same uninterested expression and said, My thoughts are a hundred times more lewd than what you are imagining. When she heard him she became flustered and looked away with a blush on her face. Tsubaki and the other two looked at her and started laughing. Soon the match started and went on just like it did in the Anime, with Kaneko holding the completely destroyed rackets. Later that night it was decided that there would be a dodgeball match in which they were allowed to use their powers as well. Tatsaya arrived home late that evening as he was working in his restaurant. When he came home he found it completely empty, so he decided to use his magic to check whether anyone was there in his house, and only found Karumi there. He went to her and asked, where are the others? Karumi looked at him and said, they are at your school to witness the match. Tatsaya nodded and said, then let's go as well, do you want to come with me? 
Kurumi jumped on him and said, let's go then. Tetsuya nodded and then teleported with Kurumi. Soon both of them arrived at the gymnasium of their school, but as soon as they reached there they could hear sound of some explosions. Both of them got alert and then immediately headed inside thinking that it was some kind of attack. Tetsuya opened the door and the site which welcomed him was the gymnasium covered with craters. He then saw some dodgeballs flying here and there. Kurumi then came to his side and asked, what happened here? Tetsuya said, I don't know. Both of them then heard, just stand still you bitch and let me hit you. Both of them looked at the source of voice and saw Miyuki, holding two dodgeballs in her hand and aiming at others. Kurumi said, Miyuki's inner self is out. Himari then threw a dodgeball at Miyuki and said, and let you have Tetsuya's virginity, no way in hell. Tetsuya who heard her twitched his lips and asked, what the hell is happening here? As he said that his leg was grabbed by someone. Tetsuya looked towards his leg and saw Kiba completely tattered and beaten up. Tetsuya crouched down and asked, Kiba what happened here, why do you look like you are about to die? Tetsuya said that and started to heal him. Kiba who felt his pain subside a bit looked at Tetsuya and said, we were just having our dodgeball game like it was planned and we won as well. I don't know how, but it somehow transformed into a battle royale where the last one standing was allowed to have your first time. Even us boys were not spared by it. Tetsuya and Kurumi got surprised by the information they got and Kurumi immediately started her planning. Tetsuya then looked at the scene in front of him and saw the girls from Sona's and Rhea's peerage except the kings and queen down on the floor. The rest of them including his whole team except Kurumi were still fighting while throwing the balls at each other. Tetsuya then felt someone grabbing his shoulder and turned his head to the side. He saw Kurumi looking at him with a serious expressions, and then Kurumi said, stop them or it would not be late before they kill each other. Tetsuya who heard her thought that she was over exaggerating it a bit, but when he saw Miyuki wearing a headband which said, kill the bitches get on Isama. He thought that the things can really get ugly. He then used his psychic powers and collected all the balls on the field and made them move in his direction. The girls who were fighting before got surprised and looked where the balls were going only to see their prize standing there. Tetsuya then arranged the balls in rows and columns and started to make them rotate fast. He looked at girls and said, you have caused enough destruction already. You need to stop this. Miyuki then said, Ani-sama don't button it is our fight. And the, the others voiced their approval on her claim, even Asia was supporting her. Tetsuya sighed and said, then you leave me no choice. Je then stamped his fingers, and the number of balls multiplied. Tetsuya then glared at them and said, the one who gets hit is outright? Then let's see who is able to withstand my attack. He gave an evil smile making all of them shudder, and then launched all the balls towards them at great speed, completely destroying them in the volley of balls. When all of them were on the ground completely defeated by Tetsuya's attack. Tetsuya sighed and said, what the hell were they even thinking, doing something so stupid? Are they some four-year-old children deciding all that with just a mirror game are they idiots? Kurumi then came to his side and said, yes, they all really are idiots, but because of their idiotic act, one benefited a lot. And smiled. Tetsuya looked at her smiling, but then he realized something and was completely shocked by it. He pointed his finger at her and said, why why you used me? Kurumi smiled and hit him with a ball as well and said, yup, and now your first time is mine. She then looked at the rest of the girls and said, thanks for the opportunity you guys, I really appreciate it. All the girls looked at her and gritted their teeth in anger, while Kurumi started planning on what to do on her night with Tetsuya. After Tetsuya healed all of them and brought the whole gymnasium back to its original condition, Tetsuya and the Gremory team were back in the orc celebrating Gremory's and Kurumi's win, though the only one who was happy about her win was Kurumi herself. Rias then looked at Asami and said, well then let's go and get you a familiar. She then looked at Tetsuya and said, you know what if any of you join my peerage you can get a familiar for yourself as well. Tetsuya then looked at his teammates and asked, so girls wanna make a deal with the devil. All of them smiled and said at the same time, no thanks making Rias brows twit h for a bit, but she then sighed and said, well it's regrettable, but I cannot take those who are not a part of my peerage with me and then teleported with her peerage. Tetsuya then looked at others and said, well, shall we go? They looked at him and said, don't you want to see which familiar will she get? 
Tetsuya nodded his head and said, of course I would like to see, but don't you guys want a familiar for yourself as well, I already made the arrangements. At his words all of them perked up and hugged and said their thank you and love you stuff. Kurumi then got back inside Tetsuya, and then all of them teleported to the familiar forest as well. As soon as they were teleported the scene which awaited them was a forest which seemed to came out of a horror movie. They looked around for a while, and then the girls said in unison, creepy Tetsuya ignored them and looked at the group of people in front of them, who were looking at him and his team with a shocked face. Tetsuya raised his hand and said, how have you been Ria's and team, did you miss me? with a bright smile on his face. The girls who saw him blushed but then Ria stomped towards him and said, what are you doing here Tetsuya, no leave it, tell me how are you even here. Tetsuya looked at her and said, what, I don't need to make a deal with the devil to come here, I have my own connections as well, right Zatuji. As he said that a cheap copy of Ash Ketchum jumped from a tree, surprising the girls who came here for the first time. The person who jumped from the tree was an old man wearing a blue cap with a sleeveless shirt and shorts. The person looked at Tetsuya and said, long time no see my friend. Tetsuya walked towards him and shook his hand. He then looked at his team and said, meet him girls, he is the familiar master, he will show you around and will help you get your familiars, but if you want to roam freely, you are allowed to do that. He then looked at Zatuji and said, you don't have any problem with it do you? Zatuji gave him a thumbs up and said, I don't usually allow that, but since it is you who is asking me I don't have any problems. He then looked at others and said, okay I will be going then. He said that and immediately started jumping from tree to tree. The others looked at him and then looked at each other and asked, where did he go? Zatuji then said, oh, he must have gone to meet an old friend. Riaz then looked at Zatuji and asked, Familiar Master Zatuji how do you know Tetsuya, and who is the old friend that you are speaking of? Zatuji then looked at Riaz with a surprised expression and said, Huh, heiress of the Gremory house? When did you came here? Riaz who heard him twitched her lips but then said, I have been here before the guy who just left. Zatuji then said, Well I didn't notice you earlier, anyways I and Tetsuya know each other, because he helped me before, when there were some stray devils that kidnapped some of the young creatures living here in order to sell them, and Tetsuya was the one who stopped them. They all nodded on the sudden information that they received, and then Riaz asked, And who is the old friend that you were talking about? Zatuji smiled and said, Dragon King Tiamat. When he said that all of them except Asami and some members of Tetsuya's team were surprised. Zatuji then looked at the sky and then said, anyway let's get the familiars before the full moon sets. Though they wanted to know more about the relationship between Tetsuya and Tiamat, they decided to get their familiars first and ask about it from Tetsuya himself. Tetsuya was jumping from tree to tree for a while and finally landed in front of a cave. He then released some of his power to make the others aware of his presence. After waiting for a while Tetsuya could see a silhouette of a girl coming towards him from the cave, and only after she came closer to him, Tetsuya clearly saw her. The girl who was running towards him had a voluptuous figure with light blue hair and fair skin. She wore a deep blue colored dress and had blue eyes. The girl then came in front of Tetsuya and said, so you finally got time to come and see me, huh? Tetsuya only gave a wry smile and said, look Tia I was very busy for quite some time, so I was not able to come to the underworld for a while. The lady named Tia who had a cold expression, softened her gaze a bit and said, well it doesn't matter, what's important is that you at least came to visit me. She said that and turned around and said, wanna go for a walk. Tetsuya smiled and nodded his head. Both of them roamed around the forest for a while talking to each other. Soon they came in front of the lake, and Tia asked, do you remember this place? Tetsuya smiled and said, yeah, how can I forget this place, this was where you met with me and Karumi when you thought that we were the ones who were trying to kidnap some familiars. Karumi then materialized beside him and said, yeah, and she got her ass handed down to him by Tetsuya. As soon as Tia saw Karumi she glared at her and said, vixen. Karumi looked at Tia and said, long time no see, lizard hag. Both of them then started releasing their auras to dominate over the other. The clash between their auras made the atmosphere around them chaotic and started damaging the area around them. Tetsuya who saw that released his own aura and said in a cold voice, stop right now. 
When they heard his cold voice along with the pressure that he was releasing both of them immediately stopped and said, it was the hag's vixen's fault. They then glared at each other and said at the same time, my fault, it was clearly your fault. Tick marks appeared on both of their foreheads and they said, stop copying me, you bitch. Both of them then started getting angry, but then Kurumi smirked and said, to no lizard hag, Tetsuya promised to give his first time to me. As Tia heard that she zoned out. She then looked at Tetsuya and said, Tetsuya is that true? Tetsuya shrugged his shoulders and said with an uninterested tone, I have not promised anything, that is something they all decided to do by a competition that the girls had for that very purpose. Kurumi came towards him and said, hey, you can't say that, I will be the one to take your virginity, even Miyuki who had her inner self awakened that time agreed to it. Kurumi kept on spouting something for a while making Tetsuya irritated. Finally being irritated enough Tetsuya said, fine fine, do whatever you want. Kurumi who hurt him looked at Tia who was gritting her teeth and said with a smirk, okay, I will do just like that, and then pulled Tetsuya in a kiss. Tiamat who saw that had a shocked expression on her face. Kurumi then left Tetsuya in order to breathe in some air. She then looked at Tiamat and showed a victorious smirk. Tia who saw that glared at her and transformed her hand into draconic claws and said, now, that does it, you damn vixen, you dare taint my maid in front of me, Tetsuya looked at her and said, hey when did I agree to that? But Tiamat and Kurumi ignored him. Kurumi then transformed her hands into claws as well and said, bring it on lizard hag. And both of them started attacking each other. Tetsuya sighed and then placed a barrier around the area and sat down on the ground, took some popcorn from his storage, and watched their match in silence. Once both Tiamat and Kurumi were exhausted after fighting for a while, Tetsuya came towards them and said, done yet? Both of them looked at him and said, not yet Tetsuya sighed and said, leave it at that, and Tia why do you want to be my mate? Doesn't dragons look down on other races as they are inferior to them? Tia looked at him with resolute eyes and said, I don't have that kind of mentality only that the inferior dragons look down on a person's species. Stronger dragons like me appreciate power over background, and most of the dragons want their mate to be strong and capable, and you who defeated me so easily is the perfect candidate to be my mate. Tetsuya looked at her and said, but there are so many strong beings you would have met over the time that you lived in this world, aren't you interested in any of them? There are those so-called dragon kings and heavenly dragons as well. Even the super devil like Serzichs should be able to fight on par with you. Tiamat scoffed and said, don't take me for such an easy woman. I have standards of who is worthy of being my mate. Firstly the other dragon kings are not able to defeat me. Secondly the heavenly dragons that you talked about are the worst. To fight their own brethren and that too without any reason, are not even suitable to be called a dragon. And that damn son of a bitch Drake, I wanted to kill him with my own claws for borrowing and then destroying my treasure. If only he would not have died in the three-way war. Tiamat was gritting her teeth and an aura of anger and revenge leaking from her. Tetsuya looked at her with a sweat drop and thought, Drake would be seriously fucked up if Tiamat would have known that he was currently here. Suddenly at another part of the familiar forest Drake started shivering in fear and thought, I don't know what is it, but it is seriously dangerous for me. Tiamat then calmed down and said, and regarding non-dragons, most of them are very prideful and look down on, you even protected the home of all the little ones who could have died, because of the clash between our powers by making a barrier. And unlike most powerful humans who look on dragons as a means to increase their reputation by slaying them, you spared me even after I tried to attack you, and gave me chance to explain my actions. She then walked close to him and said, what else do you want me to think before deciding to make you my mate? Kurumi scoffed and said, I don't know maybe feel love towards him. Tiamat glared at Kurumi and said, shut up you vixen how can you say that I don't like him? The way he cared for me after I was injured after his attack and the consideration he showed by not hurting the young dragons who were wary of him and were attacking him for injuring me. And all the dates we went on around the forest and underworld. Ah uh, those were some of the happiest moments of my life. Suddenly the atmosphere around them suddenly got tenses, and both Tetsuya and Tiamat looked at Kurumi. Kurumi was looking at both of them with a smile, but the pressure she was releasing was saying something different. Kurumi then said, oh, so Tetsuya went on some dates with you, and that too without telling is huh. 
Tetsuya who heard that thought, even though I would be able to neutralize this situation, but all the things I will go through would be troublesome. Let's try to resolve it right here. Tetsuya looked at Karumi and said, I do came here to meet with her, but that was because I was the one who injured her and wanted to check that she was alright. And when I was here she asked me that she wanted to visit some places, and I tagged along with her because she asked me to. In no way I was informed those were dates at all. Karumi narrowed her eyes and asked, really? Tetsuya nodded his head and said, really? She then stopped releasing pressure and said, I will believe you for now, but make sure nothing like that happens from now on. Tiamat then looked at Tetsuya, anyway, ever since that time I have a feeling of being together with you and want you to be my mate. Tetsuya looked at her and focused in her eyes. He could feel that what she was saying was true. He then sighed and said, I don't have any problem with that, but you before he was able to finish Karumi said, but you have to get the permission of the others as well, and in this case, you have to make me accept you as among all the girls I know you the best. And smirked. Tiamat who heard the gritted her teeth, but then an idea came to her mind and said, well it's most likely that a vixen like you would be wary of me being his mate, after all you must be worried that Tetsuya would leave an old vixen once he gets to be with me. And gave a mocking smile to Karumi. Karumi who saw that mocking smile, got angered and pointed her finger at her and said, bring it on bitch, we will see whether he leaves me or not. Karumi said that in anger, but soon realized what she just said, shit, she tricked me. Tiamat looked at her and said, what, don't tell me Karumi, a person like you would go back on her word. Well what can you expect from a vixen such as yourself? Karumi gritted her teeth and said, I would never go back on my word. Karumi looked at Tutsaya and said, now that is done, let's seal the deal then. And immediately pulled him in a kiss. Tetsuya who was expecting that to happen thoroughly enjoyed the kiss making Tiamat blush, as she had never done this kind of thing. Soon both of them separated from each other and were panting heavily. Tiamat then looked at Tetsuya and said, Tetsuya make me your familiar. Tetsuya looked at her and asked, why do you want to become my familiar? Tiamat sighed and said, there are many young and arrogant devils that come here every month and try and make me their familiar, dealing with them is nothing but a pain in the ass. So if I become your familiar not only would I be free from all those troublesome devils, but also will have a closer bond with you. Tetsuya nodded and said, well, I don't have any problem with that I originally came here to get some familiars for me and my team. So it is also favorable for me. Tetsuya then formed a contract with her, and a seal appeared on his palm. Tetsuya looked at the seal which looked like a dragon and asked, what is this? Tiamat smiled and said, that's the crest that you will get on forming the contract with a strong dragon. Tetsuya nodded and then looked at Karumi who was still slightly pissed for being easily tricked by Tiamat and said, Karumi let's get going, the others must have got their familiars by now. Karumi looked at him with a slightly displeased expression. Tetsuya looked at her and said, well what goes around comes around, you tricked me earlier, and now you are the one who got tricked. Think of this as karma that's all. Karumi who heard him pouted and looked away. Tetsuya sighed and pulled her in a hug, and then caressed her back and said, don't be mad, you know that I like you a lot, and it doesn't change the fact that you were the first person to be with me. We know each other far longer time than anyone else. Another person who have feelings for me doesn't change this fact. Karumi snuggled closer to him and said, okay I understand, but you are going on a date with me, and remember that your first time belongs to me and only me. Tetsuya hummed in approval and kissed her forehead. Tiamat who was watching them sighed and thought, well I can understand how she feels, after all it is difficult for beings as strong as is to find a person to rely on. She then smiled with determination and thought, but it does not mean that my feelings are inferior to yours, and I will prove it. She the said, oi lovebirds weren't you going back to your pals. Stop flirting I front of me, and even if you want to do that let me join as well. Both Tetsuya and Karumi stopped embracing each other and Karumi get inside Tetsuya. Tetsuya then looked at Tiamat and said, ready to go Tia. Tiamat nodded and both of them started walking towards the others. After that both Tetsuya and Tiamat reached where the others were, and Tetsuya asked introduced her as her familiar much to their surprise. Though they still congratulated him and Tiamat and Zatuji was especially happy that she was able to find someone that she wished to follow. His team also showed their familiars to everyone. 
all of them decided to go on their own and find a familiars for themselves, and Tetsuya had to admit that they did a pretty good job. Their familiars had the characteristics that were able to go in sync along with them and could help them while fighting. Asami just like the Anime was not able to get any familiars, and she was also about to get killed by Tiamat, once she knew that she was this generation's Red Dragon Emperor. If not for Tetsuya stopping Tiamat by kissing her in front of everyone to make her forget about the current situation, Asami and Drake were sure to die. But just as soon as Tetsuya stopped kissing her, he saw that all of the girl had their clothes being melted by some sort of green-colored slime, and both Zatuji and Kiba's eyes were also covered by them. The girls who were covered in the slime were making erotic noises, and the melting of their clothes and being naked didn't help but make Tetsuya's little brother rise up. Tiamat who saw the bulge in Tetsuya's pants blushed. She then looked at the trees and shouted, Hey slime, why are you not falling on me? I want to enchant Tetsuya as well. Tetsuya who heard her covered his crotch but then Miyuki came forward and said, Ani sama don't bother about those bitches focus on me and get as hard as you want. And started making some erotic poses. Tetsuya finally tried very hard to control his emotions and then destroyed all the slimes there with his psychic powers and then used his time magic to return the now left rags back to the clothes they originally were. Akeno then came towards him and whispered in his ears, I have to admit that you were very healthy down there. I don't mind if you punish a naughty girl like me later when we are alone. And bit his ear slightly. Tetsuya who was excited earlier, was not able to calm himself after the sudden attack and blushing. And every girl looked at Akeno who was laughing with her hand in front of her mouth. Tetsuya looked at the girls who were just now nearly naked, but were now acting as if nothing happened. He then felt a tap on his shoulder and turned around to see Zatuji staring at him. He looked at him for a while and asked, what now? Zatuji looked around checking if anyone was near them and asked, you saw them all naked right? Explain me the whole scene in full detail. Because of that damn slime covering my eyes I was not able to see anything. Tetsuya looked at him with a deadpan look and then gave a tired sigh. He then placed Zatuji in a Jinjutsu of him being among a group of naked girls, but just as the girls turned around, they turned out to be Miltans. Tetsuya then looked at the group in front of them and said, let's go back, now I don't know why, but I am feeling very exhausted now. They all nodded and also decided to go back. He then looked at Tiamat D asked, Tia do you want to come with us or remain here in the familiar forest? Tiamat looked at him and said, I am going with you of course, though I will have to come back from time to time to check on the younger dragons. Tetsuya nodded, and then all of them teleported back to the earth, leaving behind Zatuji, who was screaming with fear evident in his voice. The next day everything went like normal except Tetsuya being covered by everyone's familiars, and it seemed that they liked him more than their own masters. Tiamat also tried to use this excuse to stick to him, only to be stopped by the combined forces of the other girls. Tetsuya could also see that Trias was not paying attention on anything and was thinking deeply about something. He concluded that there must be some news about Riser that she must have received to make her like that. Though he could see that she was very troubled, he decided to let her think about it on her own, as her mind must be in a chaotic state because of that. He also told the others to not disturb her, and all of them approved of his idea, and silently left the clue room to let her think alone in peace. Later that night Tetsuya felt someone enter his room through a magic circle, and was immediately ready to attack the person, but when he felt a familiar presence in the room, he sighed and eased his tension. He then thought, how could she enter the house, I have placed runes all over the house to prevent teleportation by unknown people. Suddenly he remembered something and sighed, oh, I was adjusting them for Tiamat to come and go as she pleased, and have deactivated the runes for a while. He then looked at Rias, and despite knowing why she was here, he asked, what are you doing here in the middle of night Rias? Rias looked at him and said in a desperate tone, Tetsuya please make love with me. And grabbed his hand. Tetsuya who heard her desperate tone and even saw some tear in her eyes, was a bit surprised, but shook his head and said, sorry Rias, but I cannot do that. Rias was shocked when she heard him and said, why? Am I not good enough for you? Tetsuya again shook his head and said, it is not that I don't find you beautiful and attractive, but it is also true that I don't have that kind of feelings towards you. And besides I don't think that the problem you are facing that you are so desperate about will be solved if I pop your cherry. 
Briaz shook her head and said, No, I thought over all different possibilities, but this was the only thing that I could come up with. This is the only way that he would not be able to complain. And she started undressing herself. Titsaya looked at her and said, Stop right now, whatever you are doing, the thing that you are planning to do will not be able to let you out of the problems. But Riaz didn't listen to him and finally jumped on his bed, only wearing her undergarments. But before she was able to do anything Titsaya used his magic and restrained her using ropes. Riaz looked at him completely misunderstanding his intentions and said in a sultry voice, I didn't know that you were so kinky Titsaya was about to say something, but before he was able to a white colored magic circle appeared in his room and Grafiev appeared from it and said, doing something with a lowly commoner, Master and Serzich's Sama, would be very sad. Titsaya looked at her and saw that her eyes were closed. He smirked and said, oh, so Grafia thinks of me as a lowly commoner, the truth really is harsh. Grafia who recognized the voice immediately panicked and looked at Titsaya and bowed her head and said, that's not true Titsaya-sama I don't think of you like that, you are far from a lowly commoner, in fact I should say that you are very great and honorable person. She then thought, shit, I should have checked where she had teleported, instead of simply following her energy signature. Now Titsaya is sure to be angry with me. And after all the things he did to help me in Venelana Sama. She then heard him chuckling and looked up. Titsaya who was laughing said, sorry sorry, I am just joking around, I know that you did not mean that, so don't think too much about it. Grafia then looked at him laughing and blushed a bit. Riaz looked between both of them and asked with a confused look on he face, do you both know each other? Grafia looked at her and said in her usually cold tone, yes Titsaya Sama and I know each other for quite some time, but that's not the issue right now. Riaz Sama I did not expect you to do this kind of thing to get out of this situation. Riaz looked at her with a slightly annoyed look and said, if I don't do this father and brother won't take me seriously. Besides it is up to me to decide who I want to give my chastity to, you all have no right to decide that for me. Grafia then picked up Rhea's shirt and placed it around her shoulders and said, then too you should not show your skin to others, so easily even I have yet to show him my naked body, even if you are in such a situation, so don't do it before I do that with him. Now let's go and discuss this matter at your home. Rhea's nodded her head and said, okay, but Akeno would join me as well. Grafia looked at her with a neutral expression and said. The priestess of thunder? I don't mind, high class devils do prefer to have their queens with them in this sort of situations. Grafia then looked at Titsaya and as if Titsaya understood what she wanted to say or released Rias from the ropes. Rias then looked at him with an apologetic expression and said, I am sorry for making you go along with my selfishness. Titsaya sighed and moved towards her and patted her head and said, you are troublesome, a bit arrogant, exhibitionist, and I don't like some of your methods of doing a few things. Titsaya then paused and looked at Rias whose brows were twitching because of all the things that Titsaya said and was pouting a bit. Titsaya then smiled and said, I still consider you as my friend and family so don't feel bad, I will try to help you if the things go too much out of your hands. Rias then smiled and said, thank you. She then looked at Grafia and said, let's go then. Grafia looked at her and said, please go on ahead of me, I have something to discuss with Titsaya Sama. Riaz looked at her for a while, but when she saw that she would not be getting any answers from her teleported away. Grafia then looked at Titsaya and said, I would like to apologize once again for what I said. Titsaya waved his hands and said, don't worry about that, I know that you were not aware that Riaz would show up at my place. Titsaya then turned serious and said, so Riser is coming soon, huh? Grafia nodded her head and said, yes he is coming and please don't take such actions that may lead you to some problems with the devils. Titsaya smiled and said, don't worry I won't take any major actions that might cause some disturbance, and even if I get myself involved do you really think that I would be in danger? Grafia sighed and said, I know that you would not be in danger. What I am worried about is fighting against you, and clearly those who know you and your strength among the devils won't want that. Titsaya laughed and said, don't worry I am not planning to do anything like that, but there is one thing I am curious about. Didn't the date for their marriage was after Riaz completes her studies. So why the sudden change? 
Grafia showed an annoyed expression and said, he wants to make the marriage between the two houses as soon as possible, and decided to make haste, and even though Serzic's Sama tried his best to stop him, but he was only able to make some special arrangements in order to give her a chance to let her escape from the marriage, and that arrangements are even not in Rhea's favor. Tetsuya sighed and said, that Ziotikus is sure very greedy and let me guess, the special arrangements that you are talking about must be a raiding game, right? Grafia nodded her head and said, yes, that is the way, and Rhea's Sama has a total disadvantage in this case. Though not the strongest riser is still plenty strong, and has also won a lot of raiding games, so it can be said that he has experience as well. Tetsuya massaged his temples for a while and said, anyway, I cannot directly interfere as it is a decision taken between two high-ranking devil houses. He sighed and thought, some of them really are devils. Selling their own daughter for riches and even that too even before they are born. Truly despicable. He was then brought out of his thinking by Grafia who said, by the way, I can compensate you by taking Rhea's place, and we can do what she was about to do to you. Titsaya who heard her twitched his lips and said, maybe another time, right now you have some things to do, right? Titsaya could have sworn that when he said that Grafia clicked her tongue before teleporting away. He then sighed and lied back on his bed and slowly drifted into sleep. The next day Titsaya and the others went to the school normally as Titsaya had not yet told them that Riser would be visiting today. The school went on normally, and at the end of the the rest of his team decided to go home and practice with their familiars, much to Titsaya's surprise. Currently outside the orc clubhouse. Asami and Kiba were walking towards the club room, and Asami asked Kiba, Kiba why was the prez spacing out yesterday? Do you have any idea? Kibble looked at her and shook his head and said, sorry I have no idea about that. Maybe some internal affair of the Gremory house. Asami though for a while and then asked, do you think Akeno-san would know about it? Kiba gave a smile and said, I think she must know. She is president's right hand woman after all. Suddenly both Kiba and Asami got alert, and Asami said, there is someone inside the club room. You know that person Kiba? Kiba was surprised to see that Asami was able to sense the person inside the club room as well, and now understood how effective Tetsuya's training was. Kiba then came out of his stupor and said, yes I recognize this energy signature. Don't worry this person is not an enemy and then started walking towards the club room. Asami looked at his back and then shrugged her shoulders and started following him. Soon both of them came inside and opened the meeting room door. As soon as they opened the door the rest of the members of the Gremory group came into sight along with a silver-haired maid, wearing a blue and white French maid attire. Riaz then looked towards the door and asked, you both are finally here. Where are the others? Asami looked at Riaz and said, the girls went back to train with their familiars, though that was just an excuse, and are now doing some shopping together, and Tetsaya went to the student council to help them with some work. But who is she? While pointing at the maid. Grafia hearing her question bowed and said, nice to meet you I am Grafia Lucifuge a maid of the Gremory household. Rias nodded her head and said, okay, now there is something that I have to tell you. Grafia looked at Rias and asked, Rias Sama do want me to explain the situation? Rias raised her hand in order to stop her and said, let me do it. She then looked at the others and said, the truth is but before she was able to say anything the room lit up in flames, and there was a huge orange colored magic circle on the floor. Kibba looked at circle and muttered with a slight venom in his voice, Phoenix then a blonde haired man dressed in red suit and pants with a witch shirt underneath the coat, appeared from the circle. The blonde man said, Riser haven't been to the human realm for quite some time. He then looked at Rias and said, Riser have come for Urias my love. With a cocky tone. Asami clearly not liking his tone looked at the Grafia and asked, who is he? Grafia kept her eyes shut and said, he is Riser Phoenix Sama, a pure blooded devil from the Phoenix household and fiancé to the heir of the Gremory household. Asami then processed the information she just received and said, fiancé to the heir of the Gremory household. Then that means he is Grafia nodded her head and said, yes, Riser Sama is engaged to Lady Rias. Asami looked at Riser with a shocked expression when she heard that. Right now both Riser and Riaz are sitting on a sofa together close to each other, and Riser is was playing with Riaz's hair. Akeno then came closer to him with tea and some refreshments, and placed it on the table. 
Riser took a sip and said, my, Rhea's queen's tea is absolutely delicious. Akano looked at him with an expressionless face and said with a bow, thanks a lot for your praise, and then moved away. Riser then placed the cup on the table and then started careezing Rhea's thighs, making her peerage grit their teeth in anger. Rhea's who finally had enough of her being harassed by him stood up and said, enough Riser, I have already told you, I will not be marrying you. Riser then stood up as well and said, but Rhea's hasn't your father already made the things clear. Riser then said, marriage between pure-blooded devils like us is important as the number of pure-blooded devils has greatly decreased after the previous war. And keeping that in mind our fathers decided to engage us for the good of the devil society. Rias then said, my father is definitely rushing things too much without even my consent. Anyway I will not say it again, Riser I have no intention of marrying you. Riser who was now a bit pissed of lifted Rias chin using his hand and said, don't forget it Rias, Riser is the face of the Phoenix clan here, and Riser will not allow you to sully Riser's name. Riser will take you back to the underworld, even if that requires Riser to incinerate all of your servants. After that both of them released their auras, and Graphia was about to stop them, but before she was able to there was a knock on the door followed by a voice, I am coming in. Hearing the voice the Gremory peerage along with Graphia had a relieved expression on their faces. Rias was a bit panicking definitely not wanting Tetsaya to hear about her engagement, and Riser was sweating bullets on recognizing the voice. The door opened and Tetsaya came inside with a bundle of documents in his hands and said, Sona sent some documents and wants you to go through them. He then looked at Riser and said, Oh, if it isn't my dear old friend Riser. Riser who heard him immediately tried to maintain the expression on his face and gave a 90 degrees bow and said, Nice to meet you again Tetsaya-san, Riser hopes that you are doing great. All of them in the room except Tetsaya and Graphia were shocked on seeing the sudden change in Riser's behavior. They were not able to believe that the person who was being so arrogant just a second ago was now bowing his head and talking politely to their friend. Riaz looked at Tetsaya and asked, do you happen to know each other? Before Tetsaya was able to answer her Asami said, ah. Now I remember where have I heard his name before. The others told me while training that there was once a person named Riser who was acting very cocky in front of Tetsaya and Tetsaya made that person's dick attached to his forehead after defeating him. The room was completely silent after Asami said that. Riaz and her peerage turned their heads and were holding back their laugh. Even Graphia was was shaking a bit from holding back her laugh. Tetsaya decided to calm the situation and walked towards Riser and moved his hand and said, I hope that you are doing fine, what is the business that you come here for? Riser shook his hand and felt a bit grateful that he neutralized the situation as he was feeling humiliated that time. Riser then said, yes Riser is doing completely fine thanks for asking, and Riser is here to bring my fiancé back to the underworld to commence our marriage. He then looked at Atreus and said, but Riaz here is being selfish and is not going back to the underworld with Riser, even if it is for the good of the devil race. Tetsaya looked at Riaz who looked down with a sad expression on her face. He then sighed and said, look I am not a bearded old man who keeps on saying, for the greater good. What I believe is marriage should only be done when there is consent from both the parties, even if it is arranged. He then again looked at Rias and said, and seeing how sad Rias is I think she definitely don't want this marriage. Riser who was surprised by what Tetsaya just said was a bit angry and then said, then what should Riser do, just go back to the underworld like this. Riser cannot do that. The name of the Phoenix family will be ruined if something like that happens. Riser was getting agitated by each and every word he was saying, and noticing that Tetsaya started to release his own aura, which made the atmosphere around them quite tensed. Feeling the pressure from Tetsaya's aura Riser gulped his saliva and bowed his head and said, Riser is sorry about that. Tetsaya nodded and stopped releasing his aura and said, don't worry about that, and I am not. Graphia nodded her head and said, just like Tetsaya Sama said, Serzich's Sama has already expected such a situation to arise and has decided on a last resort measure if no conclusion is reached. Riaz looked at Graphia and asked, last resort? Graphia said, if you are so insistent on breaking your engagement with Riser Sama, then you can do that by winning a raiding game against Riser Sama. On her word the discussion about the raiding game started among the Gremory group. 
Riser then showed a slight smile and said, Riser has participated in a raiding game and has won many of them as well. He then looked at Trias and said, You, who are still not old enough to join the raiding game is an amateur and have no experience. He then asked, Rias just asking is this your whole peerage? Rias then crossed her arms and said, No Tutsaya is not in my peerage. Riser looked at her with a weird gaze and said, That is clear even if you don't tell me Tutsaya San is leagues above you, how would you even be able to reincarnate him as a devil? At his words Tutsaya laughed and said, Well sire Riser, well said. Rias was embarrassed and angry at what Tutsaya and Riser just said, but soon calmed down. Riser then snapped his fingers, and the room was again covered in flames with a magic circle on the floor. Tetsaya looked at the flames and said, Haven't I told you before don't use flames with your magic circle, and even if you want to Atlas decrease the intensity of flames. Riser looked at Tetsaya and bowed his head and said, I am sorry tetsaya san I will do that from the next time I my teleportation circle. From the flames 15 women appeared each having different physique and wearing different attires. Riser then looked at the ladies and said, Riser have 15 that means a full set. Tetsaya looked towards the girls and said, Yo, long time no see. All the girls looked towards Tetsaya and immediately blushed. A short blonde haired girl with drills walked towards her and said with a bow, It is nice meeting you again Tetsaya Sama, I hope that you are doing well. Tetsaya smiled and patted her head and said, I am doing great Ravel, but you don't have to be so formal with me. How about it let's go and have some ice cream later, my treat. Ravel who was blushing from being petted nodded her head and said, I would love to. Seeing both of them two people were quite displeased by it. Riser was looking at them and thought, why do Riser get that sun part, whereas Tetsaya san got the deer. Life is so unfair. Kaneko who was looking at them was thinking, that harlot is being patted by the hand which pets me. And some ominous aura started radiating out from her. The Sami who was standing beside her asked, Kaneko-chan is everything alright? Do you want to eat some sweets? Kaneko looked at Asami and said, Right now I want to eat some fried chicken. Do you think Tetsaya Senpai will let me kill it? The Sami who heard her turned away and thought, Scary 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 scary. Kaneko-chan is very scary after discussion between Riaz and Riser went for a while, it was decided that the raiding game between them would take place after 10 days. Though this made Riaz a bit angry as Riser was showing pity to her, she didn't complain as she knew that she was at a disadvantageous situation. After all the discussion was over Tetsaya went with Ravel as he promised, and Kaneko also tagged along with them much to Ravel's displeasure. Kaneko also decided to show her superiority over Ravel and sat on his lap the whole time they were in the shop, making Ravel grit her teeth in anger. Ravel also tried to make Kaneko understand that what she was doing was inconvenient to Tetsaya, but Kaneko only showed her a mocking smile. The next day early morning the whole Gremory group and Tetsaya's team were going to the mansion that the Gremory family owned for their training camp. While walking Riaz looked at Tetsaya and said, I didn't know that you would agree to train my peerage so easily. Tetsaya looked at her and said, Train? What train? Riaz looked at him with a confused expression and asked, You came with us to train my peerage for the game right? Tetsaya snorted and said, Who would come for that? I only came here because it was best opportunity to skip classes without dealing with any problems from the student council. Hearing him his team gave a sigh, and Riaz was twitching her lips. She then came in front of him and placed a hands in her waist and said, Look, if you are staying in the mansion, then you are going to train my peerage as well. Tetsaya looked at her with a neutral look and said, No problem, but I am not going to babysit you. I will only give you pointers the rest is up to you. At his words Asami shuddered. The Gremory group looked at her and asked, What happened? Why are you shivering? Asami looked at them and said, He said the same thing to me before he started as my even if you want to die, you cannot die training session. So I guess you should be ready for the worst. At her word the whole peerage gulped their saliva and looked at Tetsaya who was standing at starting point of the slope. Soon all of them came near Tetsaya and were about to climb up, but Tetsaya stopped them and said, Wait, your training starts from now on, and listen if anyone whines even for a second, then you would be up for hell. He said that in cold tone making all of them except his team shudder. He then took out some wristbands and gave it to all of them, and motioned them to wear it. 
After all of them wore the bands they all felt something change in their bodies. Tetsuya looked at their expression and said, Before you ask, those bands have stopped the flow of your magic and demonic power, making you unable to use either of them. He then used his magic to increase the gravity around them and said, I have changed the gravitational force around your body a bit. Your task now is to reach the top without taking out those bands within an hour. Any questions? Riaz then raised her hand and asked, Why am I doing something like this I am the king, and also use magic instead of my body, so this is pointless for me. Tetsuya looked at her with a deadpan expression and said, You said that you are the king then that means if you retire the whole game is lost instantly, and do you truly believe that the pitiful amount of power that you possess will be able to stop Riser? You must at least be knowing about how a phoenix fights. Rhea's brows were twitching, but she could not find anything wrong about what Tetsuya said. She then sighed and asked, Okay, I understand but what will happen if we are not able to finish this within an hour or take off our bands? Tetsuya showed a malicious smile and said, Believe me that you would better be off without knowing. The whole Gremory group was shivering after seeing Tetsuya's smile. Asami then said, Welcome to the training camp of hell. Tetsuya then looked at them and said, Since you all have no more questions then start climbing. All of them then started climbing with Tetsuya and his team in the front, and the Gremory group in the back, the most surprising thing here, was that unlike the Anime, Asami was able to climb a bit easily, and was not complaining about her being the weakest or others being a monster. The one who was suffering the most was Ria's, as she was not used to physical activities at all, and was lagging behind the others. Later that day all of them were able to reach the top of mountain with great difficulty, and were sweating and breathing heavily. Tetsuya looked at them and nodded and said, Good now take a 10 minute break, and then come back after changing into your training gear. After a while all of them were present in front of Tetsuya and his team. Tetsuya looked at all of them and asked, The first step towards your training will be working on your weak points. Now tell me what do you think is your weak point? All of them were surprised by the question and started think about it, but being the devils of the prideful Gremory family, they didn't think that they had any weak points, except for Asami, who was asked to keep her mouth closed, as she already knew her weak points by training under him. Tetsuya looked at them and asked, what, answer my question. Riaz looked at him with a smile and said, we cannot answer as we really have no weak points, all of my cute servants are really talented. Hearing their king say that all of them puffed their cheats in pride, but their happiness was short-lived because Tetsuya said, then why did your so-called talented group lost to me so easily? Tetsuya sighed and said, your first problem is that you all are overestimating yourselves. Let me give it to you straight as of you are right now you won't be able to defeat Riser, even if all of you attacked him altogether. All of them became angry except Asami who knew that what he was saying was true. Riaz then said, hey, there is no way that we would lose to him like that, even though we have no experience in raiding games, we certainly are strong. Tetsuya then looked at her with a mocking expression and said, then how about it, why don't you all fight Asia and prove to me that what you are saying is true. She is our team's latest member to join, so compared to others, she had less time to train. At her words Riaz smirked and said, don't complain if we hurt her too much. Tetsuya just smiled and looked at Asia and said, You don't have any problems with this right Asia? Asia shook her head and said, I have no problems with it Tetsuya-san, but in return can I sleep with you tonight? Tetsuya had stopped thinking that the girl standing in front of him was the same he saw in the Anime, and just messed with her hair and agreeing with her demand. Soon the whole Gremory group except Asami were standing in front of Asia who was adjusting her gloves. Riaz looked at Asia with a smile and said, Don't hate us Asia, we know what Tetsuya asked of you is selfish, but we will try to not injure you. Asia looked at them with a smile and said, Sorry. Riaz smiled and said, You don't have to apologize, it is that brute that should be apologizing. Asia shook her head and said, No, I am apologizing for hurting you in advance. And smashed her fist in the ground causing huge crack in the ground and a mini earthquake in the field. Seeing the power that the girl packed the wild group was shocked. Even Kaneko surprised seeing that Asia was stronger than her. All of them jumped to avoid the shockwave that was traveling towards them, but as soon as they jumped to avoid the attack, Asia came in their sight and punched Kiba in the gut, knocking him out. Seeing Kiba taken out so easily. 
Rias ordered Kaneko to keep Asia busy, while both her and Akeno prepare their magic. Kaneko nodded and launched towards Asia and punched her. But before the punch was able to connect Asia grabbed her hand and threw her in Akeno's direction. Akeno who saw Kaneko flying towards her, stopped charging her magic and decided to catch Kaneko, but the force with which Asia threw Kaneko was too much for her to withstand and was sent flying after colliding with her. Rias looked at the situation in front of her and gritted her teeth. She then fired her attack which she had charged towards Asia and was thinking that her attack will take Asia down. Asia also didn't stood still and started charging a Kai wave in her hand and fired it towards Rias attack, completely overpowering it and finally hitting Rias, making her loss consciousness. After confirming that all of them were down she came towards Tetsaya smiling and said, Tetsaya and I did good, right? Tetsaya looked at her and was seriously wondering how such an innocent girl could turn into something like this. After Tetsaya was done praising Asia and her made her jumping from happiness he then said, you did great Asia, the fact that despite being a human, you were able to defeat a group of devils. I am proud of you. He then closed the distance between them and kissed her forehead. Though they didn't tell the others Tetsaya had already turned Asia into a high human before starting the high school. He also came to know that though not too big, high humans does have some physical improvements over normal humans, and the flow of energy is also efficient in high human bodies. He then said, now will you please heal them and then drag all these talented devils back to their rooms. Asia nodded and some of the girls went with her to help them put the devils away. Tetsaya then looked at Asami and asked, after watching the fight what did you conclude about your teammates? Asami then looked at Tetsaya and said, they are very prideful and have not trained at all. They are only relying on contracts to increase their strength. The only person that I can tell work the most is Kiba who has at least studied how to use a sword. But he only relies on his speed and has neither much power in his attacks not endurance to take on hits. Kaneko-chan is the same as well. She is only using her root traits, but she neither has techniques nor speed to evade or react to attacks. She then paused for a while and then said, Akeno-san is not lacking, but she is doing the opposite of both Kiba and Kaneko. She is not using her queen traits to the fullest and is only using the bishop part of it. So even if her magic is strong and she is technically stronger than our king, she don't pauses the speed to react or evade or the endurance to take on attacks. Now talking about Prez Sai. To me it looks like she has only trained to manifest her demonic powers, which continued to grow stronger as she grew up. She don't even have control over her power, and only relies on charging up her power, and then firing without even knowing about the output she is using. To put it simply, she overconfident in her abilities. Tetsaya nodded his head and then looked at her with an appreciative gaze and said, Good, looks like teaching you to observe the situation first was a good thing on my part. Now here comes the main question, how do you think will you- Asami looked at Tetsaya for a while, and then sighed before saying, I am no match for any of them yet. I am not as fast as Kibben or strong as Kaneko-chan. My magic is not that strong as well. Though after boosting I can fight on par with them, but that is only for a short while, and in a fight there is a chance that they would attack me even before I am able to boost. She then slumped her shoulders and looked down and said, right now I am the weakest in the group. She said that with a sad voice. Tetsaya sighed and patted her head and saying, you know in your group you have the highest potential to grow. You are hardworking, know what your weak points are, try to act only after analyzing the situation, and most of all you have the drive to become strong not for yourself but for your friends. And if you think that you are currently weak, then there is only one thing that you have to do is train till your body falls apart. Asami then looked up and at Tetsaya and sighed before saying, yeah, I can only expect that kind of advice from a training maniac. Train till your body falls apart huh? I am willing to do it if you promise to practice all the positions that I know of in the bed with you. And gave a sultry smile. Suddenly her shoulder were grabbed by someone, and she turned her head only to find Miyuki and Himari holding one each and said, really then let's go and start your training immediately. Don't worry both of us will help you a lot in your training. Though both of them had a smile on their faces, but the black aura which was surrounding them said something completely different. Asami gulped her saliva and thought, I am surely dead today. Later that day in the evening the unconscious devils woke up, and after remembering what happened to them became gloomy. 
The Sami was somehow alive after the training session she had with Tatsaya's team. All of them then gathered on the dining table, and Tatsaya was sitting right in front of Ria's looking at her with a smile on his face, making her grit her teeth and look away in embarrassment. Soon the girls from his team brought the dinner that they prepared, and then they all started eating. While eating Tatsaya looked at the devils and said, after today's battle you all must be knowing that what all are things that you are bad at, but I am not going to ask you, and is going to tell you what I feel, and what you would be doing for training during the remaining days. All the devils stopped eating and looked at Tatsaya. Tatsaya nodded and looked at Kiba and said, Kiba, you have your speed because of your night piece, and your sword style is great as well, but the thing that you are lacking is endurance to withstand attacks and strengthen your attacks while attacking. From tomorrow onwards you will wear those wristbands I gave you today along with some weights and will take on attacks directly. Simply put you will be a meat shield from tomorrow onwards and the one who would attack you would be Asia, but don't worry she will be holding back and I promise you that you will not be injured, she can use heel punch which only causes pain and no injuries. Though Kiba was a bit worried about being a meat shield and that too with Asia attacking him. He decided to trust Tatsaya as it was an opportunity for him to become stronger and could cover his weak points. Tatsaya then looked at Akeno and said, You Akeno-san will be trying to master your control over the other aspects of your queen piece and will also try to control USM fetish during battle. Akeno was a bit conflicted on being asked to control her urges during a battle but decided to comply with him anyways. He then turned to Riaz and said, Your case is the most serious here. You would be doing basic workout with those wristbands and weights on, and try to maintain your body first, and you have to also control your demonic power as well, you don't have a great control over it. And don't forget to go through all the strategies for the raiding game as well. Riaz was a bit angry when she was asked to do basic workouts, but she could not retort to what he was saying and complied. He then looked at Kaneko and said, You will be training with Shizuka, and will improve your strength and reaction speed. Just like Kiba you are too much dependent on your rook piece and don't have speed to complement your attacks and hence you are not able to react or evade easily. Kaneko only nodded her head and didn't gave it much thought. She had already decided to believe in him as he was able to train Asia who was just a human to have strength greater than hers and wanted to be like her as well. After that all of them finished their meals and unlike the Anime, directly went to bed as they were too tired to do anything. From next day onwards they all started to do their training as Tatsaya had told them, except for Riaz who slacked off on her training, though she too trained a bit so as to not make the others suspicious. The rest of his team had already informed him about her slacking off, but Tatsaya decided to let her do as she pleased as he was finally enjoying the holidays and were not training then on his own, much to their relief. Tatsaya though was still resting quite a bit helped Asami in using her sacred gear more efficiently. Drake had told them that she was close to achieving the balance breaker and tried to help her in achieving it. During the whole time that Kiba was training he realized why they all say that Tatsaya was a devil when it comes to training. He has been taking hits from Asia from that day onwards and though he didn't suffer any injuries, he still felt quite a lot of pain. But despite all that he felt that the training was effective as both his evasion speed and endurance has improved over the time. Akeno has also started to utilize the powers of her queen piece, and because of that her speed and strength have improved a lot. She was also made to do her magic training by continuously exhausting her mana, and then repeat it again when she was recharged, and because of this both her mana pool and magic strength increased a lot, and not she is officially stronger than Ria's. Kaneko's reaction speed has also improved as she was made to fight blindfolded, which increased her ability to sense with her other senses. Her strength and speed is also increased, though she is still the slowest in her team, except for Asami, who could get faster than her after boosting. And just like that their training continued, and tomorrow would be the day that they will be fighting with Riser in the raiding game. Currently it is the middle of the night, and Tetsuya is lying on the ground and is observing the beauty of the night sky. Suddenly he felt someone's presence nearby and said, Don't you think that it is time for you to sleep Asami? Asami who was dressed in a tank top and shorts, came closer to him and said, I can say the same thing to you as well. She then gave a short smile and said, I cannot sleep, and since I was not able to find your presence nearby, I decided to search for you. 
She then sat on the ground as well and asked, what are you doing here though? Titsaya smiled and said, just enjoying the night sky here, the sky in the city is not as beautiful as the one we can see here. Asami looked up as well and said, yeah, it is truly beautiful. She kept on looking for a while and then said, Arigato. Titsaya who heard her blinked in surprise and asked, for what? Asami looked at him with a smile and said, for helping me become a girl once again, training me and using my sacred gear, making me stronger, helping me make a lot of good friends. Asami kept on saying things, and Titsaya finally said, Asami Asami looked at him and asked, yeah? Titsaya then said, I was not the only one who helped you, Riaz was the one who took you in after you decided to be- She then released him from the kiss and said, I know all about how others helped me. But it can never change the fact that you were the one who helped me the most throughout all these days. Titsaya who looked at her was still in daze, but soon got out of it and thought, now that I think about it what she said could be considered true, I am the one who is helping her the most for all the time she has been a devil. Not even her own king has helped her that much. Asami then looked at him and said with a blush on her face, accept this as my thanks and started to close in again for kiss, but just as their lips were about to be touched, they heard a cough cough sound. Both of them suddenly got startled and moved away from each other, and turned around to look at the person who disturbed their moment, and sorry is standing there wearing a nightgown and glasses, and was holding a book in her hands. The Sami who saw her wearing glasses came stopped being nervous and asked, Prez is your sight bad? Riaz who was feeling a bit uneasy seeing both of them kissing each other, came out of her thoughts and said, no, my sight is not bad at all. These just help me concentrate a bit better while studying. And showed her book. The Sami looked at the book and asked, what book is that? Before Riaz was able to answer Tatsaya said, a book on various strategies that could be used in a raiding game. Riaz was surprised to see that Titsaya knew what book she was reading, but shrugged it off. The Sami then asked, Prez do you mind if I ask, why do you not want to proceed with the marriage? Riaz who heard the question was silent for a while and then sighed before saying, because I am a gremory. This marriage is only taking place not because Riser loves me, but only because he loves the gremory in my name. The Sami the remained silent for a while and then asked, do you hate being a gremory? Riaz shook her head and said, I don't hate it in fact it could be said that I am quite proud of my name, but being proud doesn't mean that I like all aspects of it. She then looked in a direction as if thinking of something and said, from a young age people has been praising me and treating me kindly, but that was only because of the gremory in my name, to them I was not Riaz, but the heiress of the gremory clan. Even my own father set me up with Riser saying that it was my job as being the heiress of gremory clan. He put the Gremory name before me, and that's why I don't want to be married to a person who only liked the Gremory and not the Rias behind that name. She then looked down with a saddened expression and said, My only dream is to make others recognize me, not because of me being a Gremory, but because I am Rias. I want to marry a person who likes me because I am Rias. That's why I came to the human world. Here people don't look at me with me being a Gremory, but because I am Rias. I feel happy here rather than being an underworld where my only worth is because I am Gremory. She then had a determined look on her face and said, that's why there is no way that I am going to lose tomorrow. I will show them that I can become great just being Riaz and not a Gremory. Asami then looked at her and said, I don't know if it will help or not, but I admire Y.O.U a bit, not because you are a Gremory, but for who you are. Riaz then smiled and so did Asami. Both of them then looked at Tetsaya to which he raised his eyebrows and asked, what? Both of them didn't said anything and kept in looking at him, and after finally realizing what they were trying to ask he said, you want my opinion on this as well, huh? Tetsaya then sighed and said, to put it simply I don't care about all this stuff. I only judge a person by how he acts in front of my eyes. If I deem him worthy of my respect, then he gets my respect of not even if the whole world were to collapse, then too he will only see me showing him my middle fingers. I don't even care about that your brother is a Mayu, so judging you on the basis of you being a Gremory is simply a waste of my time. I will only judge you from what I see about you, and till now I have seen that you skipped your training a lot. At this Riaz got surprised and looked away from him, and Tetsaya started chuckling also with Asami. He then looked at both of them and said, now it is already very late, and I advise you to go in and have some rest, tomorrow is a big day for both of you. 
Both of them nodded their heads, and then Riaz said, What would you be doing? Shouldn't you come in and sleep as well? Titsaya lied back on the ground and said, Nah, I will stay just here and enjoy the night sky. And closed his eyes. But soon he noticed someone lying beside him and asked, Both of you what are you doing now? Riaz just came closer to him and said, Just let me sleep like this for tonight. Asami said, And I am here to make sure that you don not do anything perverted. Titsaya looked at her with a deadpan expression and said, You are the last person that I want to hear that from. He then sighed, Well, do as you want, but I cannot guarantee that Miyuki will not freeze your body up for doing this. Both of them just hummed and then silently drifted off to sleep. The next morning Titsaya when Titsaya woke up he felt that there was a lot of weight over his body, and his face was covered by something soft which he thought to be a pillow. He then tried to move his hand to shive the pillow away, only to find that his hand was also trapped by something. Seeing that there was no other way he decided to open his eyes, and the first thing that welcomed him was a slightly pink-looking protusion over his pillow. Titsaya kept on looking the protusion for a while, and then as if lighting hit him his eyes opened widely, and his used some force to move away and stood up. After taking in a deep breath he looked back to where he was sleeping, and found two girls lying there with one of them being partially naked, as her small clothes were messed up, and were not covering some areas and the other one completely naked, and sleeping there without any care to this world. The girls of course were Riaz and Asami with Riaz being the completely naked one. He then looked at Asami's exposed breast, and now knew what the pillow over his face was. He then sighed and formed a huge bowl of cold water over the sleeping girls, and then dropped the ball over them, making them wake up in panic. Titsaya looked at both of them who were breathing heavily and said with a smile on his face, Rise and shine, I hope that both of you slept well. Hearing his voice both the girls glared at him, and on seeing them the thought that came to Titsaya's mind was, Asami with drenched clothes is looking way hotter than the completely naked Rias. Not good not good it's still morning, I cannot let my thoughts be corrupted so early in the morning. Riaz didn't know, but somehow she still felt that Titsaya was thinking something rude about her. Titsaya continued to smile and looked at Riaz and asked, Riaz, if I may why are you completely naked when you slept with your clothes still on? Riaz then showed a proud smile and said, it's one of my many talents. No matter how many layers of clothes I wear before sleeping, I am always able to take them off during the course of night without even being conscious. Titsaya's brows were twitching, and he immediately bonked her head, making her groan in pain and shouted, that type of thing in no way is a freaking talent and wear some clothes already Riaz ignored him and crossed her arms, lifting her huge breasts before saying, no, that is indeed a talent, to be able to do that while one is sleeping is just incredible. Titsaya had to marks appeared on his forehead said, at best it could be considered a disease like sleepwalking. Ria's face twitched a bit and she said, you have some nerve to call my talent a disease. Suddenly the atmosphere around them turned cold, and they felt someone releasing some pressure on them. It is you who have the nerve to show your slutty body to Ani Isama you redeed bitch. Hearing that voice Ria's whole body shivered, and she gulped her saliva she then looked at the direction where the voice came from, and saw Miyuki walking towards them with her sword unsheathed. She then looked at Titsaya with a pleading gaze to which Titsaya said, I warned you last night, do it at your own risk. Miyuki kept walking towards her and said, let me show you my talent as well. I am good at skewering bitches with an ice spike in the ass. She then showed a smile and said, tell you what I will do you a favor and shove it from the front hole. You wanted to lose your virginity, right? Riaz was sweating bucket and her legs were shaking out of fear. Miyuki the raised her sword, and suddenly a huge ice spike came from under Ria's feet, who was somehow able to dodge the spike. She then looked at the spike with fear and thought, she is serious, she is really going to skewer me. And started running away. Miyuki who saw her running away started to follow her, but she simply walked while continuously giving rise to various ice spikes. Titsaya looked at the scene in front of him with a complex feelings. On one hand she was having pity for Ria's while on the other he was finding it funny. But even though his thoughts were complex on thing was sure. I guess today she will so her training seriously for compensating for all other days. Though why is she running around the villa naked like an exhibitionist pervert? He then sighed and gave a telepathic message to Miyuki telling her to maintain a good distance away from the pervert. 
He then looked at Asami who was looking at the scene in front of her and was feeling complicated as well and blushed on seeing her still in her drenched outfit. He then said, though I think that you are looking very tempting and sexy in your current outfit. I would advise you to change as soon as you can if you don't want to catch cold. She then looked at her appearance and covered her body and said, Tetsuya no echi. Tetsuya's lips twitched when he heard her calling him a pervert. He then sighed and said, just go and change your clothes. Asami looked at him with a shocked expression and said, what? Aren't you tempted by my appearance? Are you not going to violate my body? Tetsuya looked at her with a neutral expression and said, I will tell this to Miyuki and will ask her to train you the next time and started towards the villa leaving behind a shivering Asami. Later that day Tetsuya and his team returned back to their house in Kuo and left behind the Gremory group who were going to fight in the raiding game at night. Though technically Tetsuya and his team were not allowed to watch their game as they were not devils, but since both the participating parties knew them, they were allowed to observe the match along with Sona and Tsubaki. All of them had already encouraged the Gremory group as they would not be meeting before the game after that and will only be available after the game was over. Right now Sona, Tsubaki and Tetsuya's team, except for Tetsuya who was currently working and promised to come as before the match begins, was sitting in the observation room and were waiting for the match to commence. Sona looked at the group of girls sitting beside her and asked, who do you think would win? All of them didn't wait for long and said, as long as they don't self-destruct Rhea's team will win. Though if Riser sans team had also made preparations for the game, then we don't know. Sona nodded and looked at the screen and said, oh, the field is about to be shown now. And just as she said that, an exact replica of the Kuo Academy was shown to them. Sona rubbed her chin and said, looks like Lucifer-sama pulled some strings in order to at least give a home ground advantage to Rhea's. At the same instant the whole Tetsuya team said, he is a siscon after all. Sona nodded her head and then said, well home ground advantage will be a great help to Rias, but it does not change the fact that Riser is both strong and experienced, and that too, coupled with his insane regeneration. This is going to be quite tough for Rias. Soon both the peerages were sent to their respective headquarters, and then the cold tone of Grafia addressed them saying, the time to make your plans begins now and a bell was then rung. While both the teams were forming their strategies and the others were waiting for the match begin. Sona had a lot of thoughts going through her mind, and she then looked at Tetsuya's team and asked, hey, mind if I ask you a question? His team looked at her and asked, what? Sona then said, why did Tetsuya help her? Because as far as I know he don't have a good opinion of Rias. All the girls in Tetsuya's team looked at each other, as if discussing something which they were actually doing with their telepathy. Miyuki then looked at her and said, We can tell you, but you have to promise that you are not going to utter a word about this outside. Sona who heard the serious tone of Miyuki, also became serious and thought about the condition for a while before agreeing to it. Miyuki then nodded her head and said, You see, just like you said, Ani-sama doesn't have a good impression of the red head. He don't like people who are way too spoiled and don't even give it effort to solve their problems. The actual reason for what he did is that he was willing to help her peerage not her. Sona became confused by her words and asked, what does that mean? Can you explain it in simple terms? Miyuki then said, what I mean to say is that Ani-sama does not care about whether that red head marries Riser-san or not. What he is worried about is her peerage members getting dragged with her. You see is and Ani-sama have a good opinion about her peerage members. Kibisan is Ani-sama's good friend, Kaneko is obedient and hardworking, even though she had gone through a lot, then there is Asami who has become like a sister to all of us, and Ani-sama care for her as well, which is shown by how much effort he put in training her for all this time. And even though Akeno-san has that side to her she helps us wherever she can, and is also doing most of her king's w-o-r-k-n. There is also a request to help her whenever we can. She was about to continue, but Sona interjected her and asked, wait, how do you know about Kaneko's past, because as far as I remember she never tells about that to anyone. Miyuki just smiled and said, that is none of your concern, we have our own methods, and now where was I? Sona felt a bit annoyed but left it at that as she knew that everyone has their ways of accessing information. Miyuki then continued, so like I was saying, 
Ani-sama only helped her to help our friends from not getting dragged with her, because as you may know how power hungry you devils can get. Once they come to know that Asami has the boosted gear in Kaneko's origins, they will start to look at them with breeding livestock. Also there is a Keno-san whose body is enough to make most of the men lust over her, and being under same roof as Riser, that is sure to happen. Sona then thought for a while and said, then why he did he even bothered to encourage Ria's if he only wanted to help her peerage? At her question the girls in Tetsuya's team looked at her weirdly, and Miyuki said, Sona, I didn't expect you to ask such a question. Hearing this Sona's lips twitched, but she controlled herself from lashing out. Miyuki then sighed and said, you are her childhood friend right? So you must be knowing her quite well. Sona only nodded her head in approval. Miyuki also nodded her head and said, then what do you think will happen if Ani-sama were to directly say that she was hopeless and would only help her peerage? She then paused for a while and then said, being the spoiled princess that she is she would surely reject his offer and would also try to prove that she was not hopeless by directly try to fight Riser, who is leagues above her. Honestly, she would not even be able to follow the movements of his knights and knowing the endurance of her body, the game would be lost without any of the other members of her team fighting. Himari and the other Nekashu then interjected and said, and besides he never truly encouraged her. He was not even bothered even when we informed him that Riaz was not doing her training, yet he would sometimes help the other members of her team. And just last night we picked up the sound of both of them talking about something being recognized as Riaz and not as a grammary. He explained to her that he didn't believe in titles and all only accept who is worthy by what he sees which made her feel relieved. But what she failed to catch on was that he never said that he deemed her worthy for the whole time he was talking. They then crossed their arms and said, and what is that not liking to be seen as a gremory, all the wealth, authority and connections that she have are all because she is a gremory. All the servants that she have except for Asami are all the ones which were recommended to her by someone in her family, and you must be knowing what method did she use to get Asami in her peerage. Even the authority that she has over Kuo was given to her, because Serzich has asked for it, despite knowing how bad her administration skills are. They then sighed and then said, all in all, what I am saying is that all that she is, is because she is a gremory, and when it is asked of her to do some proper duty as a gremory, she is saying that she don't want to be recognized as a gremory. I mean come on is this a joke to her? Even if the condition for her was to marry a person who she does not like, instead of training herself and her peerage, she runs here to the human world, while also taking over the town without giving a damn about the security of the people living here. Many people died because she didn't took proper attention about the stray devils, fallen angels and priests coming to this town. Despite knowing that Kuo is currently a devil territory she didn't inquired any of them on entering the town without permission, and when asked why she would say that it would lead to war. Like seriously, some unauthorized people try to enter your territory and d you instead of questioning them, let them roam free and do what they want. Sona remained silent for a while and then said, I can understand what you want to say, but from what I just heard don't you all think the same about me after all, I am the Citri heiress as well, and all the things that I have are because of the Citri name? On hearing her question Miyuki shook her head and said, no, you are not the same. Even though you are the Citri heiresses and receive all the privileges of being one as well, you do not neglect your duty as one. Even you got out of your engagement by your own efforts, and we both know that the areas which are under your supervision in town are safe. And do you really think that he would have accepted your confession if he thought that you were troublesome or spoiled? You work hard Sona and you help your peerage as well, all of us including Ani-sama know that. Sona became happy that all of them thought so good of her, and so were the thoughts of Tsubaki. Sona then adjusted her glasses and said, but then doesn't mean that you all were somewhat lying to Ria's and were making her hopes rise up. All the girls shrugged their shoulders and said, were we, we never said anything to her that was a lie, thought C never told the truth to her as well. But we still didn't lie a bit. I will still say that Ria's would win this game, but that too only if she doesn't do something reckless like confronting Riser or his queen on her own. Even Ani-sama said, as long as she don't get overconfident over the achievements of her servants and starts decided to attack Riser on her own, she can win. Sona had a sweat drop when she heard that and said, you people are really scary, I don't know what would have happened to me if I was spoiled like Ria's. 
All of them just laughed and then looked back at the screen to observe the match. At Kuo Town 4 hours before the game begins. Tetsuya has just finished his shift and was now going back to his home to freshen up and then go and watch the raiding game between Riaz and Riser. He then entered his house and found that someone was still here and was surprised because the others had told him that they would be going there a bit earlier, along with Sona and Tsubaki, who would be in the administrating team. He then went to the room where he could feel the presence and found Karumi still there lying on her bed. Tetsuya then asked, Karumi you didn't go with them? But Karumi didn't answer him. Tetsuya was about confused by this and went closer to her and found her breathing heavily. Seeing her like that Tetsuya got worried and placed his hand on her and to check whether she had a fever or not. But just as he touched her forehead something triggered inside her and she immediately pulled Tetsuya on the bed and got on top of him. Tetsuya looked at her and finally realizing something he asked, Karumi are you in heat? Karumi licked her lips and said, sorry but yeah I am currently in heat. I have been holding on for the past week, but I don't think that I would be able to hold back anymore. And immediately smashed her lips on Tetsuya's making him surprised by her sudden actions, but soon he started to kiss back and slowly he was the one who was on top. Both of them then separated and had a thin string of saliva connecting them and were breathing heavily. Tetsuya looked at her with passionate eyes and a slight blush on his face and then started undressing her slowly while he started kissing her neck and nibbled her ears, making her moan lightly. After she was completely undressed Tetsuya started to grope her huge chest, making her moans becoming louder. He then looked at her and asked, do you want me to continue, if you want another man this is going to be your last chance. And smirked at her. Hearing that Karumi pushed making him fall back and then light on top of him with her face facing his crotch. She then removed his pants and underwear and could see his huge dick standing high and mighty. She then turned back to look at Hima and said, if I had not made my decision already, then I would not be doing what I am going to do next. And took his dick inside her mouth. Ahh Tetsuya was suddenly felt surrounded by a lot of pleasure and gave a moan. He then looked at the huge butt in front of her and said, let me pleasure you as well and started licking her pussy. MMPHH since she had his dick in her much she was not able to moan loudly, but Tetsuya could tell that she felt extreme pleasure as he noticed her body shiver a bit. Karumi then tried to calm herself and put his dick in between her breasts while she was still sucking it and started giving him a tit job. Tetsuya felt his dick to be surrounded by her soft breasts and once again felt a great pleasure and could feel that he was close to cooming and said, I am about to come while he was still licking. Karumi who heard her started doing it more intensely trying to make Tetsuya come immediately. Tetsuya also didn't stay still and put one of his finger who which was a bit wet by her fluid and rubbed her anus, making her leave her dick and moan loudly and at the same time he came as well. I am cooming I am cooming both of them said at the same time and were covered in each other's fluids. Tetsuya then took of his shirt and pulled Karumi towards him and got on top of him and said, are you ready? Karumi nodded her head and said, I have been waiting for this for a long time. Tetsuya then positioned his cock in front of her entrance and looked at her and said, I was waiting as well. She then nodded her head and Tetsuya thrusted his dick in her pussy in one go, making her jolt out in pain and a small stream of blood come out of her pussy. Tetsuya then immediately started kissing her so as to ease her pain a bit and after a while she looked back at him and said, you can move now. Tetsuya nodded and started moving his hips slowly at the beginning and then started increasing his pace bit by bit, making her moan louder and louder. Ahhahh Tetsuya the moved his face close to her breast and started sucking on one of them while groping also groping her other breast. He then bit her nipple while pulled the one of the breast he was groping as well, making her shriek in pleasure. He then looked at her face and said, I am going to coom. Karumi who was moaning in pleasure looked at him and said, I am about to coom as well do it inside me. K-U-R-U-M-I-T-A-T-S-U-Y-A Tetsuya nodded his head and started thrusting faster and soon ejaculated inside her while she also came at the same time. A-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-
Tetsaya then started at her for a while and said, you were not heat right. She then smirked and got on top of him and said, rather than the game let's do it once more. This time I will be on the top and licked her lips. Tetsaya smirked as well and said, you horny fox, and then pushed her down and started doing it again. That night they did it for a few more times till Kurumi was finally exhausted and was sleeping peacefully in Tetsaya's embrace. Tetsaya then looked up and said, I think that I am forgetting about something. He then shrugged it off and said, it must not be of much importance. And then pulled Kurumi closer and went to sleep. At the same time an administration room of the raiding game between Riaz and Riser. Suddenly Tiamat appeared in the room and said, hey you guys. All of them looked at her and asked, what are you doing here Tia-san? Tia looked at them and said, I was about to go to your house, but something was blocking me from teleporting in the house anyway, what are you guys doing? Miyuki looked at her and said, we are going to watch the unofficial raiding game between Riaz and Riser. Tiamat nodded and then looked around the room and asked, where is Tetsaya? Ingvald looked at her and said. We don't know he said that he would come here before the game starts, but he is still not here. Tiamat thought that it was a bit odd, and then looked around the room and suddenly frowned and asked, where is the vixen? All of them suddenly realized it as well and started looking around the room, but were not able to find her. Tiamat then gritted her teeth and said, now I understand why I am not able to go inside the house. That bitch played her cards really well. She made a move when she was sure that no one is in the house and sealed it to prevent any disruptions in her fun time. All of them then were gritting their teeth in annoyance, along with the silver-haired maid who was standing just outside the door. Then suddenly a magic circle appeared in the room and Tetsaya came out of it. He then gave a sigh and said, Wii you, I completely forgot about the game because of that. He then looked at the others and asked, Hey guys I am not lat why are you guys glaring at me like a hungry beast? While taking a step back. While this was going on the silver-haired maid was biting her nails while thinking, this is one of those times that I hate working as a maid. I cannot show my bashfulness in front of the others. Damn, why the hell did I agree on working as a maid? Right now Tetsaya and the others were sitting in the administration room waiting for the game to begin, and Tetsaya was silently eating some coffee jelly, ignoring the complaints from the other people who were currently tied to their chairs. Ani Isama Tetsaya release me please, I was just trying to protect you from being violated by these horny beasts. All of them said in unison. Tetsaya didn't even look at them and said, no need for the just sit silently and watch the game, I have a feeling that as soon as you all are released, I would be raped by you all. Before they were able to complain again the door of the room was knocked, and after a while it opened revealing the silver-haired busty mate, Grafia. All of them looked at her and were wondering what she was doing there. Grafia then walked towards Tetsaya and asked, I will be the one who will be acting as the announcer of this game, but due to some accidents the announcing room is currently out of service. So would it be possible to do my work from here? Meanwhile at the announcing room. Random DEVIL1. Why is the whole room covered in ice? He then looked at his watch and said, and that too when the game is about to begin. Sigh luckily because of Miss Grafia's quick thinking we were able to avoid any major disturbance. Tetsaya didn't wait for anyone's opinion and said, sure I would love to have your company. And smiled at her. Hearing that Grafia blushed a bit, but soon compassed her expression and sat on the same sofa on which Tetsaya was sitting while sticking close to him. All the girls looked at her with a glare and thought, horny maid, but didn't say anything as they saw Grafia turning the mic on, and now there was a chance of their talks being heard by others. All of them then sighed and silently looked at the screens in front of them. Tetsaya noticed that the girls have calmed down quite a lot, and once he checked that they were not planning anything weird, by his telepathy, he silently undid the ropes which were binding them. Tetsaya then looked at the screen and heard the bell ring signifying the start of the game. Tetsaya looked at the screen intently and thought, now let's see how the game unfolds. At the game field. Just now the bell has just ring which signified the start of the game. Riaz looked at her team and then said, Yudo Kaneko now go and set the traps. Akeno checked the area from above and set some traps as well. All of them nodded and said, yes president, and left the orc building. Asami looked at Riaz and asked, what would you want me to do prez? Riaz looked at her with a smile and said, lie down on the sofa and I will release Sam, 
Just as she was about to continue Isami stopped her and said. If this is about releasing some of the stored power of my pieces, Tetsuya has already done that. At her words Riaz was very shocked as Tetsuya was able to break the seal on her pieces son easily, but shrugged it off said, well it works for me anyways. Soon the other three came back, and after Riaz explained their roles once all of them left the building except Riaz. Kiba went into the forest. Akeno changed into her shrine maiden outfit and started flying in the sky. Asami and Kaneko did their final preparations, and then Asami asked, Kaneko-chan you remember the mission right? Kaneko nodded her head and said, and find the sister chicken and beat her to crap. At her words Asami sweat dropped and said, not that, I am talking about taking over the gymnasium. Kaneko then looked like she just realized something and said in her usual cold tone, ah, uh, that as well. Asami's lips twitched and she thought, that is our priority though. And then both of them started moving towards the gymnasium. Soon both of them were in the gymnasium and were hiding behind the curtains on the stage. Asami observed the area around her and said silently, even the whole gymnasium is the same as the one in the academy. Soon both her and Kaneko felt someone coming through the gate and got alert. From the gate four girls from Riser's peerage came. Three pawns Isle, Nell, Mira and one took Shuolan. They walked a bit further in the room, and then a girl wearing Chinese clothes with her black hair tied in buns on both sides called out, come out servants of Ria's gremory, we know that you are there. And hearing that both Kaneko and Asami came out. The girl then looked at the both of them and said, oh, the rook and the pawn, huh. She then paused for a while and then said, I am Riser Sama's rook, Shuolan. Then a girl with a lean figure and blue hair who was wielding a bow staff said, Mira, a pawn. The lowly twins looked at them cheerfully and said, Isla Pawn. Nella Pawn. Kaneko looked at her opponents and muttered, the chicken is not here. She then looked at Asami and said, I will take on the rook. You go for the pawn senpai. Asami nodded her head and then raised her hand and said, boosted gear. A red gauntlet materialized in her hand and shouted, boost. And gave out a green glow. Both of them then jumped from the stage and landed in front of their enemies and started attacking each other. The other party also didn't stand still and intercepted their attacks. Shulin covered her feet with flames and started kicking towards Kaneko by using Kung Fu, making Kaneko focus on the defense. Kaneko blocked all the attacks which were thrown by her, thanks to her improved reaction time, and was now waiting for an opening to strike her enemy. She received the opportunity soon when she saw Shulin raising her feet high to make a strong attack, but before she was even able to raise her leg to the highest she could Kaneko punched her with all the strength she had making Shulin spit out some saliva from her mouth with a surprised look in her eyes. Kaneko then looked at her fist in surprise and thought, that rook was really a high level one, and yet I was able to inflict some severe damage with just one punch. She then esiled thinking that her training really paid off and looked at her opponent who was clutching her stomach with a look of pain evident in her eyes, and cracked her knuckles and said, let's finish this soon. And launched at her opponent. On Asami's side she was continuously evading all the attacks that were made by the chainsaws and the bow staff of the pawns, and kept on boosting. Boost she then saw Mira running towards her and trying to aim for his chest. Asami then crouched down, evaded the attack and quickly sweeped her leg, making Mira fall on the ground. She then saw the twins jump on her while saying, we will dismantle you. With a cheerful smile on their faces. Asami looked at her with a weird expression and said, that's not a thing that you should be saying with such cheerful smile. And picked Mira's staff up and and attacked both the twins' hands, making them drop their fire-covered chainsaws. Boost. Asami smirked and said, right on time, and pointed her hand in front of her. The explosion a red orb of the size of volleyball appeared in front of her hand, yeah, it is bigger than it was shown in the anime. She then heard Kaneko say, let's finish this soon, she smiled as well and said, I plan to do the same as well. And then at the same moment Kaneko covered her fist with some magic, and then both Asami and Kaneko punched in the forward direction. Kaneko hitting Shulin and Asami hitting the red orb while shouting, dragon shot. And a huge red beam traveled very fast towards the pawns engulfing them. I end the wave making them scream in pain, along with Shulin, who was punched with a magic covered fist. Soon the front of the gymnasium along with some more buildings were destroyed by Asami's attack, and Kaneko looked at the destruction caused by it with a shocked expression. 
Both of them then looked at each other and said at the same time, when did you come up with such an attack Kaneko-chan senpai? Following that was an awkward silence, and then Kaneko said, I came up with this attack after seeing Asia senpai using her fists covered with healing magic. Asami nodded and said, Tetsuya taught me this attack, saying that it is simple as well as effective at the same time. Riser Sama's three pawn and one rook retired. Both of them then heard a voice on their transmitter which said, Asami, Kaneko I just saw an explosion. Are both of you fine? Asami nodded her head and said, yeah we are fine, and we secured the gymnasium. Riaz who was sitting on the sofa in the orc club room smiled and said, good, now get out of there quickly and help Yoto. Both of them nodded and then left the gymnasium quickly. Both Asami and Kaneko were running towards the sports field where they had decided to meet with Kiba. Suddenly both of them felt an attack coming towards them, and both of them immediately juned to their sides. As soon as both of them landed they saw a huge explosion in front of them, and noticed that they were only a few centimeters away from the, the explosion's radius. Both of them then looked up to see who was the who attacked them, and found a lady with a purple hair and a huge exposed chest with a cane in her hand there. The Sami narrowed her eyes and said, you, you must be Riser's queen right? The lady who was flying in the air smirked and said, yes, I am Ubaluna, Riser Sama's queen. And fired another attack at both of them, but before it could reach them the lightning was shot at it nullifying it along with an explosion. All three of them looked towards the direction where the lightning was shot from, and saw Akeno wearing her priestess clothes with her wings out. She then looked at her teammates and said, Ara, having some trouble. Don't worry I will handle her you two go ahead. The Sami and Kaneko nodded their heads and again started running towards the sports field. Akeno then looked at Yubaluna who was smirking and said, I was always looking for a chance to fight against you, Priestess of Thunder. Akeno just smiled and put her hand over her mouth and said, Ara Ara, the pleasure is all mine bomb Queen San. And a yellow aura started to come out of her body, and seeing that Yubaluna also started to release her violet aura, and then both of them started firing their spells at each other. Asami and Kaneko kept on running and then suddenly heard. Three of Riser Sama's pawns retired. Both of them smiled and Asami said, that must be Kiba. As soon as she said that Kiba came from the site and said, yo both Kaneko and Asami stopped on their tracks and said, Kiba, why are you here didn't we agree on meeting at the sports field? Kiba gave a helpless smile and said, yes we did plan that, but president asked us to wait for a while and regroup first before taking any actions. Asami and Kaneko were surprised by the order, and Asami said, why, we have to get there sooner or later, and as soon as we reach there we can advance forward by attacking them one by one. That will be favorable for us right? Kaneko also nodded her head and said, I also think that this plan is better. If we wait and then go, there is a chance for them to attack us altogether, and their numbers are already higher than us. Asami nodded and said, yes, even though I believe that we can defeat all of them, but it will still take a lot. Kiba also nodded his head and said, I know that as well, but President thinks the Trizer will send all the remaining pieces after us, and it will make the path towards their king devoid of enemies. Asami and Kaneko looked at him with a weird expression and said, we know that as well, but what good will it do after the path is clear, and no one is attacking him? This will only take much more time, and it will exhaust us more before fighting the king. Kiba thought for a while and then said, I believe that she is planning on taking him head on. Asami and Kaneko were again surprised by this, and Asami used her transmitter and asked Riaz, Prez are you planning on taking that riser guy on your own? Riaz who was surprised by the question first calmed herself and said, yes, that's why I want you three to deal with the rest of his peerage, while Akeno is busy with the queen. Asami then asked, but isn't that guy's regeneration too fast? How are you going to defeat him? Riaz then said, even though his regeneration is too fast and his body is technically immortal, but his mind isn't. We can defeat him if we made his mind unable to process the situation. There is also the fact that regeneration takes both demonic power and stamina to work, so if I am able to make him exhausted, he will not be able to regenerate. All three of them thought for a while, and then realized that her plan could work. Asami who was now somewhat believing her asked, but how are you going to achieve what you just said? Riaz just said, don't worry I have a plan for that. Now you three go to the sports field and engage his peerage. And cut her connection. 
All three of them looked at each other, and then Kiba said, Anyway let's go we can only follow her orders now. We have already missed the opportunity to fight them individually. Both Asami and Kaneko sighed and nodded their heads, and all three of them started running towards the sports field. In the orc room. Riaz who had just cut the connection said, Now I just have to wait for a while, and once the path is clear I will attack him. Seriously my peerage is really strong being able to defeat multiple enemies on their own, makes it even clear that I who is their king, should be able to deal with him in a one-on-one -on -one easily. I just have to attack him continuously making him regenerate over and over again, and once he will be exhausted, then it is my win. In the administration room. Tetsuya who just heard Ria's plan through the small device that he had placed on all of them before the game for the very same purpose face palmed. He then said, this was what I was worried about, she became overconfident because of her peerage's strength. Does she truly believes the Trizer will just stand still while she will be attacking him continuously? The others in the room who also heard her plan nodded their heads and then Sona said, and even if Riser did according to Rhea's imagination, I know that her own demonic power is quite less as compared to Riser. She will be the one to exhaust first even if everything goes by her plan. She then glared at Tetsuya and said, by the way you do know that it is illegal to plant a spying device on the participants before the game. What would you do if the higher-ups come to know about this? Tetsuya just smiled and said, that is only if they hear about it. You think that despite knowing about the rules I would make tiny mistakes like this. They will only know about this as long as this talk don't leave the room. Sona who heard that nodded her head, but then an idea came to her mind, and she smirked before is asking, so what would I get for keeping my mouth shut? Tetsuya looked at her with a surprised expression and then said, would a date with you alone suffice? Sona who heard that smiled and said, deal accepted. Suddenly all the girls except Grafia raised their hands and said, we want compensation as well. Tetsuya just sighed and said, why did I even let you all hear that, I should have just kept it to me. Sci fine I agree to that. All of them nodded with a smile, but then the room suddenly became chilly, and all of them looked at the silver-haired maid who was sitting beside Tetsuya. Tetsuya had a wry smile on his face and he asked, of course what would it take to keep your much shut Grafia? At that moment all the girls in the room had the same thought, your cock. Tetsuya who heard that through his telepathy twitched his lips but didn't say anything. Grafia then said, then there is a place that I want to go, but going there alone would be boring, so I would like you to accompany me there. Tetsuya looked at her for a while and then said, in other words a date, right? Okay I agree now let's focus on the match. Rating game field. Right now Asami, Kiba and Kaneko are running towards the sports field as Paria's orders. Asami then looked at her two teammates and asked, do you think that this plan will work? Both of them then thought about the question for a while Kiba said, the possibility of this plan to work is very low, and I doubt the president has a proper plan to deal with Riser, but we cannot do anything about it. We have already lost the opportunity to fight with their members individually, and our only option is to fight their wild group at once. If we don't stop them they will gang up on president, and the game is immediately over. So all we can do now is defeat them as soon as possible, and then head over to where their king is. Both Asami and Kaneko nodded their heads, and then Kaneko said, I didn't know that even you can doubt president's plan Yuta Senpai. Kiba showed a helpless smile and said, if it was the me before training with Tetsuya's team, I would not have doubted her words, but all the hellish training I went through I have come to understand the, the battlefield better. I have to admit Tetsuya has prepared his team to face of in any kind of situation. Even though all I was doing was getting hit by the punches, I came to understand a lot of things, and even learned quite a lot from them. Kaneko then nodded and said, the training was really an eye-opener. We didn't even knew what our weaknesses were at the beginning. All of them then sighed at the same time and said, but his training is really hellish. And continued to run. Soon all three of them were present in the field, and Asami shouted, come out Riser's peerage, we are here to fight you fair and square. She didn't want to waste any time and decided to call them herself, instead of waiting for them to come on their own. Both Kiba and Kaneko who understood her intentions nodded and Kiba whispered, smart move. Soon mist started to appear in front of them, and through the mist, the silhouette of a girl was seen. The girl and then said, you all are quite foolish to ask us to fight you directly, but I like fools like you. 
Behold yourself I am Riser Sama's knight Karlaman. She then unsheathed her sword which set a blaze on fire. Kiba then stepped forward and said, I am Yudo Kiba, knight of Rhea's Gremory, and I shall be the one to fight you. And unsheathed his sword as well. Both of them then narrowed their eyes and started running towards each other, and clashed their blades with their speed keep on increasing as the number of times their swords clashed. Asami continued to look at their fight with a surprised expression and said, he has become much faster. Kaneko-chan are you able to follow their movements? Kaneko in her usual cold voice said. Only barely they are too fast for even my senses to catch up. Asami looked at them for a while and then said. Wait doesn't that mean that we don't have to do anything? As soon as she said that both her and Kaneko heard a voice from behind, I don't think so. Both of them then turned around, and Kaneko's eyes looked at a certain person for a while, and then she said, chicken found. Asami looked at the blonde girl standing in front of her, but then she felt someone else's presence and turned her head and said, come out now. As she said that a girl with short hair with her right half of the face covered with a white mask came and said, so you were able to sense me. You are not that worthless you know. Asami then asked, who the hell are you? The girl then cracked her knuckles and she said, I am Isabella Riser Sama's Rook. The blonde haired girl got a bit irritated and said, hey don't ignore me. Kaneko then said, don't worry I am continuously focusing on you and waiting to beat the crap out of you. Ravel who heard Kaneko looked at her more intently and said, ah, you are the person who ruined my alone time with Tetsuya Sama. And glared at her. Kaneko glared as well and said, and you are the one trying to seduce Senpai. Both of them kept on glaring at each other, and some sparks were seemed to be forming between them. Ravel then looked at her side and said, all of you deal with the pawn, I have some matters to settle with this thieving cat. As soon as she said that several more people appeared around them. Kaneko looked at Asami and said, can I lead these guys to you? Asami looked at her with a confident expression and said, sure. And Kaneko started chasing Ravel who was flying on the sky. Asami looked at Isabella and said, hey who was that blondie just now? Isabella looked at her and said, that's Ravel Sama, Riser Sama's little sister and his bishop. But don't worry about her, you should be worried about yourself and your master who is struggling there. At her words Zasami's eyes widened and she looked at the top of the building, and sorry as trying to attack Riser, who was not even giving her a chance by continuously attacking her, which made her to only stand at one place with a barrier in front of her. Asami gritted her teeth and thought, what should we do? If we don't hurry we are we will be defeated. Suddenly they heard an announcement was heard, one of Riser Sama's knights retired. Asami the looked towards Kiba and saw the knight from Riser's peerage disappearing into light particles. Suddenly an idea came to her mind and she said, Kiba liberate your sacred gear immediately. Kiba looked at her in surprise and decided to trust her and said, here it comes sword birth. And immediately an energy was thrown towards Asami. Asami then pointed her hand towards the energy and let it get stored in her gauntlet. The red gauntlet in her hand glowed and shouted, transfer, and Asami smashed her hand in the ground, creating a large number of swords around her. Seeing all the swords appear around them the remaining members of Riser's peerage along with Kiba and Kaneko were shocked. Soon all the remaining members of Riser's peerage, except Ravel, were stabbed by the swords and were retired immediately. One knight, one bishop, one rook and two pawns of Riser Sama's peerage retired. Asami then raised her hand and said, now that's badass, I didn't know that it would work so well. Kiba who heard her looked at her in disbelief and asked, you mean to say that you used that attack without even knowing what you were doing? Asami then showed a thumbs up and said, nope, after all I only unlocked this power yesterday boosted a gear gift sure is a very nifty ability. Asami then turned serious and said, anyway Kiba go to Akeno-san and help her defeat the queen as soon as possible and then come and assist us, we are going to deal with Riser. Kaneko looked at Asami and asked, is it necessary to go now, dodged a fireball, I have yet to settle my business with her, punched through one of the bigger fireballs, Asami looked at her with a serious expression and said, yes, we need to go immediately, or the Prez will be defeated. All our effort will be in vain. Kaneko nodded reluctantly and looked at Ravel who had fire revolving around her and said, we will settle this matter later, chicken. Ravel also glared at Kaneko and said, sure, come anytime you thieving cat. She then paused for a while and said, except when I am alone with Tetsuya-sama. 
Those moments are for me to enjoy. Kaneko who heard her gritted her teeth and ran towards Ria's along with Asami without saying anything. In another location of raiding game field. Akeno was looking down on Yubaluna who was currently in a very bad condition after their fight. Akeno herself was in tattered clothes but was still doing better than the queen. Yubaluna looked at Akeno with a smile and said, you really live up to your name priestess of thunder. Akeno just smiled and said, Ara Ara you were plenty strong yourself bomb queen. Yubaluna continued to smile and said, but still you must be pretty tired to help your remaining peerage from the attacks of our peerage. Akeno just smiled and said, no, even if I am a bit tired from all the attacks, I can still help my friends even if I don't rest. Suddenly an announcement was made one knight, one bishop, one rook, and two pawns of Riser Sama's peerage retired. Hearing the announcement Yubaluna was dumbfounded and Akeno giggled and said, Ara, looks like my help was not needed after all. Yubaluna looked at Akeno with rage and said, I will take you down and put her hand in her cleavage and took out a vial with a red cap on top of it. Seeing the vial Akeno frowned and knew that she would not be able to cast her magic immediately. Yubaluna smirked as she knew what Akeno was thinking and opened the vial and was about to drink the contents in it. But suddenly they heard a voice which said, not so fast and suddenly a blur passed by both of them. Yubaluna who was surprised by the voice, looked back at the vial and saw that it was not there and began to panic. Looking for this both Akeno and Yubaluna turned their heads and were surprised to see Kiba holding the vial in his hand. They were not surprised by Kiba holding the vial, what they were surprised by was Kiba, why are you holding the open vial upside down? Kiba who heard the words looked at his hands and saw that he was indeed holding the vial upside down and it was already empty. He then looked down at the ground and saw that a small portion of the land was about wet. Kiba then scratched his cheek and said, looks like I took the vial in the same position that she was holding to pour it on herself. And gave a wry smile. Both Yubaluna and Akeno were looking at him with a weird expression and were not sure what to think of him. Akeno then sighed and said, anyways let's forget about that, now back to you bomb queen. And showed a sadistic smile, and electricity started to come out of her hand. Yubaluna who looked at Akeno's sadistic smile, was a bit scared, and was about to use her magic to attack her, but before she was able to Akeno immediately came close to her and placed her hand on her exposed chest, and started electrocuting her making Yubaluna scream, which only made Akeno smile and bliss. Kiba who looked with a scared expression on his face thought, and she is supposed to have toned down her urges after the training. Soon Akeno stopped electrocuting Yubaluna when she saw that she was severely damaged and said, oh, you already broke. And then Yubaluna started to disappear in light particles. Riser Sama's queen retired. Kiba who heard the announcement looked at Akeno and said, we should be going now president is in danger. Akeno who heard that came out of her stupor and turned serious and said, let's go then. And both of them started to flight towards Ria's and the others. Raiding game field. Currently at the top of the new school building, Ria's is confronting Riser with a barrier shield in front of her, blocking the fireballs coming her way. Riser looked at Ria's whose clothes now are turned into rags, hiding nothing and smirked and said, Ria's you might as well forfeit. It will only cause you more pain and humiliation if you continue in your condition. Ria's gritted her teeth and said, There is no way I am giving up after coming this far, after defeating your whole peerage, except Ravel, there is no way that I am stopping when I am only a step away from my freedom. Riser snorted and said, You cannot defeat Riser anyway, so why continue this one-sided battle? Ria's didn't say anything and fired a wave of her power of destruction towards Riser, destroying his hand in process which immediately set on fire and regenerated. Riser then looked at her with an uninterested expression and said, Well, it does not matter if you forfeit now or not. The amount of damage you have taken will slowly result in your loss. Ria's glared at Riser and wanted to retort but knew that what Riser said was true. She was not sure for how long will she be able to remain conscious. She has depleted most of her demonic power, and the attacks that Riser's attacks were also not completely blocked by the shield. Riser then said, let's get a bit serious, Riser is getting bored. And started to prepare for a big attack and started gathering a lot of flames in his hands. Riser then launched his attack in Ria's direction, but before it could connect a sound was heard. Explosion, dragon shot. 
and a red energy wave clashed with the flames coming in Rhea's direction, making a huge explosion as a result. Though Rhea's was not completely saved as she got blown away by the aftermath of the explosion. Rhea's was about to crash to a wall behind her, but before they could collide, Kaneko caught her. Riser looked at the two new girls who were standing in front of her and said, H.O. the pawn, and the rook has came to save their master. He then looked at Asami and saw her red gauntlet in her hand and said, you must be the wielder of the boosted gear. Riser has to say, Riser is impressed with the power you just showed. Riser is willing to make you Riser's woman after Riser's marriage with Rias, how about it? Asami continued to be on her guard and said, sorry, but I am Tetsuya's. Riser who heard the name suddenly got pale and said, then Riser guessed that there is no way for you to be Riser's woman. Riser apologizes. There is no way Riser wants to be on Tetsuya San's bad side, it is better to apologize to her, even if she is a low class. Riser then turned serious and said, but even if you are Tetsuya San's woman, Riser is not going to hold back. Riser will certainly defeat you. Asami, who was still on her guard, asked, Kaneko chan is prez fine? Kaneko looked towards Asami and said in her neutral voice, she is conscious, but has sustained a lot of injuries, she will not be able to fight. Asami nodded her head and said. Then let's finish him on our own. Kaneko came by her side and cracked her knuckles. Asami then raised her gauntlet and said, Kaneko-chan buy me some time I will start boosting. Boost Kaneko nodded and launched towards Riser while readying a punch, while Riser looked at her with a smirk. Kaneko who saw the smirk on Riser's face, got a bit angry and started punching him, and even though she was doing some damage, Riser was getting regenerated immediately. Kaneko gritted her teeth and was about to hit punch Riser on the face, but before she was able to Riser punched Kaneko with a fist covered with fire and stopped her attack and made Kaneko back away. Kaneko who was now again beside Asami groaned in pain. Even though the punch in itself was not enough to cause much damage. The fire around it burned her skin a bit, even after her defense as a rook was high. Asami then said, don't worry I am ready. Boost explosion Asami then channeled her magic power to a spot and then punched forward while shouting, dragon shot. And a huge red energy wave launched towards Riser engulfing him, along with most of the building behind him. Asami who was now breathing heavily looked at the dust cloud in front of her and asked, did we get him? But as she said that fire began to ignite in front of her and Riser materialized in front of him completely unscathed but is breathing a bit uneven. He then looked at Asami and said, that attack took a lot out of Riser. He then covered both his hand in fire and said, but too bad, you are facing an immortal. He was about to attack but suddenly jumped away. At the same moment when he jumped away lightning hit that spot and caused a hole in the roof. Ara Ara, you were able to dodge my attack even at such speed, as expected of you Phoenix Sama. Riser looked at the sky and said, and to be able to make Riser dodge the attack instead of taking it head on, Riser is impressed priestess of thunder. Riser then narrowed his eyes and said, but Riser has no time to chat. Riser had already wasted a lot of Riser's precise time. And then fired towards both Akeno's and Asami's group. Both the groups dodged the attacks and then gathered together, and Akeno asked, how is the situation, do you think that we can win? Kaneko looked at Akeno and said, President is injured and cannot fight anymore, and my attacks have no effect on him. But Asama Senpais was able to make him exhausted quite a bit some more continuous attacks, and we might be able to finish him. Akeno nodded and looked at Riser with her guard up and said, Hear this we will only get one chance, use the strongest attacks that you have. Kaneko, Kiba you are up first. Asami start boosting and attack immediately after me. All three of them nodded their head and said Roger. Kaneko then started gathering magic in her fists and again launched a Trizer. Riser who was now serious unlike before didn't stand still and launched his flames at her with full intensity, but before the flames could attack Kaneko Kiba came as well and slashed his sword at the flames, which started absorbing them making Riser's eyes widen and say, another sacred gear. And immediately Kaneko and Kiba started slashing and punching him with their full strength, and this time Riser actually felt pain because Kaneko's fists which were covered with magic as well Kiba who was using his fire absorbing sword were hindering his healing quite bit. Riser glared at them and suddenly erupted his body into flames and said, don't underestimate Riser. And the flames started to run wild. 
at the administration room. Tetsuya looked at the fight taking place on the roof through the monitor and thought, the Anime really didn't showcase Riser's true might. Now I know why he is able to win all the 8 games he played seriously. This match might be a bit tricky now. Back to the rating game field. The members of the Gremory Peerage were sweating under the heat of Riser's flames and were very surprised by the power he suddenly released. Akeno looked at the scene in front of her and shouted, both of you fall back Kiba, and Kaneko who heard their queen's order, immediately jumped back and were groaning in pain. Their bodies were burned very badly, and now their movements were hindered. Akeno who was preparing her spell looked at his team and said, be prepared it is going to get a bit chaotic here. Make sure to not get caught in the attack. And then executed her magic. Suddenly black clouds started to form around the building. Akeno then looked at Riser and said, take this? And the a huge bolt of thunder hit Riser head on. Our Riser who was hit by the thunder was screaming in pain and was healing his body continuously, so as to not get defeated. Akeno who was surprised to see Riser still enduring the attack, started to get worried and looked at Asami and said, Asami are you ready, my attack is going to stop any instant now, you have to hit him immediately after that. Asami looked at Akeno with a serious expression and said, I understand. She then looked at her gauntlet and said, Drake do you think that I am ready for that? The gem on the gauntlet suddenly glowed and said, you are more than ready you just require a proper catalyst to fuel your emotions. The Sami who heard that gritted her teeth and thought, what catalyst I need now, I thought that if I increased my strength, I will be able to handle it, but what should I do now? Suddenly she heard a voice, Asami save me, the girls are trying to violate me. Hurry up Asami who heard Tetsuya's voice in her mind, started to imagine the situation that Tetsuya was in and shouted, don't touch him when I am not there I want to do that as well, Welsh dragon. Over booster? And Asami's body began to emit a red glow. At the administration room. Sona was glaring at Tetsuya and said, why did you do that? Tetsuya just waved his hand and said, well she wanted motivation, and I just gave her that, don't fuss that much. Sona's gaze only intensified and seeing that Tetsuya said, you angry? Sona nodded her head. Tetsuya then smirked and took out a photograph and said, hey why don't we put up the photos of magical girl so tan on the school notice board. Hearing that Sona's expression immediately changed and she said, well I guess I can overlook this. Tetsuya nodded and looked back at the screen. Asami was covered in a red glow, and then the gauntlet shined again, and then both Asami and Drake shouted at the same time, boosted gear. Balance breaker scale mail, the light then died down and reveal Asami covered in red draconic armor. All the people who looked at her were shocked that she was able to unleash the balance breaker. Asami then looked at Trizer and said, I have to beat this shit soon, otherwise all the fun that they are having with Tetsuya's body will be over. I want to do it as well and started flying towards Riser at full speed. At the administration room. All the people were who listened what Asami said had a complex feeling, and Tetsuya was twitching his lips. Sona then broke the silence and said, well at least she has motivation. Tsubaki then interjected her and said, but the source of that motivation is the problem. All of them then nodded their heads and looked at Tetsuya. Tetsuya then looked at all of them and asked, what? All of them then immediately said, thinking whether to really violate you now or not. Tetsuya who saw the look in their eyes immediately tied them again and said, I should have not released them in the first place, and why are you looking at me with the same gaze as them Grafia? As soon as he is the question all the girls other than Grafia said in unison, she wants the D Tetsuya was speeches by their answer, and decided to ignore them and looked back at the screen. Back at trading game field. The Sami who was covered in the armor, started boosting once again, and was waiting for the thunder to die down. Just as the attack died down. Asami launched a Trizer and said, here I come. And started attacking Riser with all her might. Riser who was feeling pain from all the attacks, started to attack Asami as well, while he was still covered in flames. He attacked her blindly without caring for his defense and with his full power. He knew that his regeneration could stop any moment now, and decided to finish them as soon as possible. Akeno who saw the brawl between the both of them was a bit worried. She then looked at both Kaneko and Kiba and asked, can you guys still move? Both of them were on the floor and tried to stand up, but were unable to do so and said, sorry Akeno-san, but at best we can move our hands. 
The Keno who heard that was a bit disheartened, but suddenly an idea came in her mind, and she looked at both of them and asked, Kiba can you still wield your sword without moving? Kiba who heard her question nodded his head. Akeno then looked at Kaneko and asked, and can you throw some with you strength to the height where both of them are fighting? Kaneko looked at the sky to check the height and nodded her head. Akeno got serious and said, listen both of you we have to finish this now. Kaneko be prepared to throw Kiba at them, and Kiba be ready to slash him with all your remaining strength. I will attack him with all the magic left in me. Listen we have to create an opening for Asami to land a decisive blow on him to get this over with. Both Kiba and Kaneko turned serious and nodded their heads. Akeno then sent the information to Asami through the transmitter and then said, let's do it. Kaneko then picked Kiba's legs and floated a bit B by her wings, but had pained expression on her face. She gritted her teeth and started to gain momentum by rotating, and once she was confident enough she threw Kiba with all her might. Kiba formed two swords I'm his hands and started channeling his magic through them to make them more stronger. He then came closer to both of them and shouted, Asami Mavi Asami immediately got away from Riser, who was confused by her actions and was immediately slashed by Kiba. Akeno didn't miss the opportunity and also fired all the lighting at Riser, making him groan in pain, but he was still resisting to go down. Akeno gritted her teeth and then immediately fell on her knees and said. That's all I had. And Kaneko came back to her supported her. Kiba came flying towards them as well and said, now all we can do is believe on her. Both of them then nodded and then looked back at the sky. Riser who was now completely healed but was breathing heavily looked was angry and said, you have made Riser angry, very angry, now you will feel Riser's wrath. And started to gather all the remaining power in his body for the next attack. He didn't care anymore, the only thing that he now wanted was to defeat them whether it killed them or not was not his concern. Akeno and the others who felt the sudden surge in power were shocked once again, but then they heard a voice. No you don't boost it at gear, full power, boost 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 explosion Asami, then made a very large magic orb in front of her, which was almost of her size. Asami then said, this is the best I got, full power drgon shot. And a huge wave which made all the others look at the attack with a shocked expression was launched at Riser, and almost half the school was destroyed by that. Riser who took the attack head-on, experienced a lot of pain and shouted, Nuuo, and then disappeared into wit light. Riser Sama retired Asami came back to roof and was about to tell Riaz that they won when she heard, Riaz Sama retired hearing that the whole Gremory peerage was shocked and looked back to see in the direction where Riaz was only to see some light particles fading away. Since Riser Sama retired before Riaz Sama the winner of the game is Riaz Gremory. The peerage members then sighed in relief but were still not sure whether to be happy about it or not. At the administration room. Sona looked at the others in disbelief and said, well, that was anticlimactic. All of them nodded and their heads in approval. Tetsaya then closed his eyes and said, you know even if Ria's got her so-called freedom, I don't think that it was worth it. All of them got surprised by his words, and Grafia asked, why do you think so? Tetsaya then opened his eyes and said, if Ria's was defeated in the game, she would not be humiliated that much as she was an amateur. But since she won the, the game like this, her name will be recorded in the history as the first devil peerage who won the game with the only piece that they lost being the king piece, which was not even able to defeat a single enemy. All of them who heard his words had their mouths open wide and were not sure whether to laugh or feel sad about Ria's. After the raiding game was over Tetsaya and his team went to meet Asami and the others. Asami who saw them asked, why the hell did you not call me while violating him? The others looked at her with a deadpan expression and then told them what actually happened, making Asami sigh in relief. They all then congratulated them and then left back for Kuo. The next morning everyone was present on the dining table except Karumi who came later, and just as she came she raised her hand in the air and said, Sup V I R G I N S S S S, while putting extra focus on the word virgin. The girls who were present in the room suddenly felt an arrow pierce them and looked at Karumi with a hateful expression. 
Karumi then walked towards Tetsuya and hugged her from behind and said, Last night was awesome. Tetsuya you were so intense that I can feel excited just from remembering about it. Ahh you were so good. She said while looking at the others making all of them groan in anger. Then all of a sudden Miyuki stood up from her chair and said, Now that does it, Ani Sama let's go to the bedroom and make love right now. Tetsuya who was not bothering interrupt their talk said, It is still too early in the morning. Miyuki's face suddenly crumbled, but then she said, then there is no problem if we do it at night, right? All the girls who heard that perked up and looked at each other with a glare. Himari then said, the problem is not that whether he will do it at night or not. The problem here is Karen then said, who would be doing it with him? And their glares intensified. Karumi who was looking at the scene in front of her with amazement, suddenly had an idea and took out Tetsuya's phone without his knowledge, and then sent a message to some people and started grinning and said, now this will be interesting. Suddenly three magic circles appeared in the room, and then Kuroka, Yusaka and a lady with black hair and golden eyes appeared out of them. All the members looked at the three of them in surprise, but suddenly all three of them shouted, which bitch dared to take his first time virginity Naya. All of them were confused as to how did they know about that, but suddenly they heard someone laughing, and all of them looked in the direction fr where the sound was coming from, and saw Karumi laughing loudly. Tetsuya then went towards her and asked with a smile, Karumi were you the one who called them? Karumi stopped laughing after a while and then said, yup, I need to make my position clear after all. She then stood up and looked at the girls and said, listen you virgins. I am the one who gathered you all to inform you that I the great Karumi has taken my beloved Tetsuya's virginity. Now you are allowed to congratulate me. All the girls looked at her with a look of envy and angry, and were about to attack her, but before they were able to do that, Tetsuya came closer to her and hit her head with some strength in her punch and said, first of all Yasaka isn't a virgin. Second, stop this nonsense at once. He then looked at the three newcomers and asked, and what are you three doing here, Yusaka, Kuroka, Amaterasu? I most certainly believe that all three of you must be extremely busy especially you Amaterasu and Yusaka. All three of them snorted and said, that vixen sent us a message that all of you were deciding who is going to have Tetsuya's second time. She even highlighted the world's Tetsuya's second time in the message. Amaterasu then said, this is more important than my work back home, after all I was the one who nearly took your virginity when you visited me last time. How the hell could you do that to me after you did all that? Tetsuya then looked at her and said, you were the one who tried to take advantage of me by using a very powerful aphrodisiac, how the hell am I the one who took advantage of you? It is me who was being taken advantage of. Amaterasu then looked at him and said, anyway, you can compensate me by doing it with me right now, let's go to your room right away. Just as she said that all the girls glared at her and said, keep your hands off him, I am going to do it with him next Naya. And all of them started arguing except Karumi who was looking at the scene in front of her with amusement. Tetsuya was finally able to resolve the matter somehow, by promising them to do it with all of them sometime later, and they accepted after Tetsuya persuaded Them while releasing his aura and pressuring them after a while. Soon all of three of them left making Tetsuya sigh in relief. Time skip? The evening later that day Tetsuya received a call on his phone and saw that it was Azazel who was calling him. Tetsuya was a bit surprised to see that it was Azazel calling him, but soon he picked it up and said, Mashi Mashi Azazel then replied, Mashi Mashi, I hope that I am not disturbing you, but I have a favor to ask of you. What? You see there is an acquaintance of mine that I told about the alcohol quality of your restaurant is very great. And that person wants to have a meal in your restaurant so I would like you to make arrangements for him. When and how many people? Well the about the number I am not sure of probably 4 or 5 people, and the arrangements should be done for tonight. Is your acquaintance troublesome? Don't worry he may be a pervert, but I can assure you he have no bad intentions. Oh, you are calling someone a pervert, then he must be a severe case. Well in any case tell him the preparations will be done, and they only need to mention your name and ended the call. Later that night Tetsuya waited for the people that Azazel mentioned for quite a while, but still no one came. Tetsuya then gave an annoyed sigh and said, next time when Azazel comes, I will cast a Jinjutsu on him to make him see everyone as Miltan. He then closed his restaurant and then went back to his home. 
While he was lying on the bed sleeping he suddenly felt someone enter his room. He then got up and saw that the ones who entered the room were Miyuki and Himari. Tetsuya looked at them and asked, what are you two doing this late at night? Both of them came closer to him and said, we want to do it with you tonight Tetsuya Ani Isama. Tetsuya looked at them with his eyes widen in surprise and said, didn't you say that you will do it some other say in the morning? Miyuki then said, but we are doing it on another day see it already past midnight the date has already changed. Tetsuya looked at both of them with a dumbfounded expression and sighed before saying, you both do know that when the others will know about this, there will be chaos. Both of them nodded and said, it doesn't matter to us, once you fuck them as well they will stop complaining. Tetsuya was shocked by their answer and said, you know you both are very shameless. Both of them then smiled and and said, we know that. And pushed Tetsuya on the bed and started to undress. Time skip. Two hours later Tetsuya was lying in between the two girls who were completely naked and were unconscious. Tetsuya looked at both of them and thought, normally they are very hostile of each other, but in bed both of them work together quite well. Tetsuya smiled at both of them, covered them with some sheets and kissed their foreheads. He was about to go to sleep himself when suddenly he felt a lot presences and that to strong ones in the town. He then sighed and said, they only came when both the people who are in charge of Kuo are an underworld. He then put some clothes on his body and decided to check on the situation. He then came out of his house and was about to fly towards the source, but stopped when he noticed something. Why the hell are all of them moving towards my direction? Tetsuya thought about it for a while, but soon shrugged it off and said, well let's wait and see what will happen. And sat in front of his house. Soon he felt that a barrier field was made around the area, making him become a bit alert. Soon he saw a large number of blue and red black colored giants running towards him. Tetsuya looked at the giants and said, now that's one hell of a stampede. Soon he saw a group of people flying in front of the giants. The group consisted of an old man with a long beard wearing a robe and a matching cap, the other person was a muscle man wearing viking-like clothing with a hammer in his hand, aside from the men there were three women in their group, as well one with silver hair. One with black hair and one with slightly purplish hair wearing different kinds of armors and weapons in their hands. Tetsuya thought that the group must be someone important as they were being chased by a huge army and decided to hear their talk. Why the hell are we running from them instead of fighting them? You idiot of a son do you think that our fight will not cause damage to all the people living here? It is great that my assistant used sleep magic on all the whole area to make them all unconscious. I told you to not go out like this, we might get attacked. Ha, us guardians never fear to get attacked, and this was for a liquor that even that crow found great. How can I miss the opportunity to not taste it? Yeah, then let's beat all of them and then go and have that booze. Men and their antics. Yeah, I feel ashamed that the old man is the leader of the Norse mythology. Hey if you want to complain so much then why the hell did you both came with me? Of course to taste that alcohol, but who the hell told you to travel through frost giants and surtur's territory? Whatever let's defeat them already this place is white enough to at least make the damage minimal. Soon all of them stopped and then the muscular man came forward and said, come on and bring your hot and cold asses here, I will kick them all. Then the black haired woman sighed and said, you cannot defeat the whole army, and even if you are able to you will make a lot of destruction. Then the purplish hair woman said, yeah you cannot beat them. But I can a voice was heard making all the giants and the group of people surprised. The sudden voice which was heard by all the made them surprised and all of them turned their heads in the direction of the voice. What welcomed their sight was a man with black hair with his hands in his pockets, looking uninterested in what all was happening in front of him. Seeing the man standing in front of them the frost giants and the fire demons started laughing and said, see a puny human has come to destroy us. Ha 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 ha. Tetsuya ignored their comments and started walking towards the giants. Seeing the man walking towards the giants the muscle man came forward and said, young man I appreciate your courage, but please stand back, we will try to hold them back. Tetsuya looked at the muscle man and said, you have some nerve to order me while you are in my territory. Hearing that all of them were shocked and then the old man said, don't speak nonsense the one who govern this town are the devil girls one with small boobs and the other with humongous boobs, and you doesn't match the description of any of those. 
All of them looked at the old man with a weird expression, and then the lady with black hair said, that's some nice way to remember someone, pervert. Tetsaya looked at the old man and said, yes I know that they are the one who administers the town are those two, but you see one of them is my girlfriend, so this town is technically mine as well. In fact the ruler of the whole Shinto territory is my girlfriend too. Hearing that all of them were shocked and the old man pointed his finger at Tetsaya and said, don't lie to me brat, there is no way that the sexy hot milfs Amaterasu and Yusaka are in a relationship with you. Tetsaya had some tick marks on his forehead, and he then used his psychic powers to squeeze the old man's balls with some strength. Ah. And the old man crouched down on the ground holding his balls while screaming in pain. Tetsaya then said, you have some guts to say that about my girlfriends in front of Nuyu bastard. The frost giants and the fire demons who were being ignored by them were getting impatient, and finally of being able to bear it more one of the frost giants said, stop ignoring us you shit. And punched towards Tetsaya. All the people got worried, except for Aden as he was in pain, on seeing the frost giant attack the young boy. The muscular man gritted his teeth and said, you coward you dare attack a human, try someone wh.ocnguy.v. You a fight -y. Just as he finished saying those words the frost giant was slashed in half. All the people present there got shocked by the scene in front of them. Like I said, you guys have a lot of guts to attack me in my territory after coming without permission. All of them looked towards Tetsaya and saw his body radiating his aura, while he was holding two huge axes in his hands. Tetsaya looked at both the groups of demons and the group which looked like humans and said in a cold voice, if you surrender now, you live make a wrong move you die. Choose now. His voice made all of them suck in their breath, but then the frost giants and fire demons leaders said, like hell we will surrender to a human like you. Tetsaya just sighed and said, why do all guys like you appear in this town? He then turned serious and said, anyways you decided toady then. Rita, Stormbreaker and raised his axes in the air. Soon red lightning started to gather around Tetsaya, making even the musclin took a step back on seeing the power of those lightning bolts. Seeing that even the muscle man tack a step back his whole group were shocked beyond belief. The silver-haired girl then said, did Thor-sama really take a step back after seeing those lightning bolts? The other people who had their mouth open wide suddenly came out of their stupor, and then the black-haired lady said, no we are not seeing thing that muscle brain really retreated after seeing that lightning. Then the purple-haired lady said, it seems like we are in deep shit now, if that man take us for an enemy we are done for. Hey perv why did you have to say something pervy about his girlfriend? If we die it will all be your fault Aden. The old man or Aden looked at the ladies and said, hey, it wasn't my fault that I got surprised after hearing him claiming that those milfs are his girlfriend. Aden then suddenly had an idea and said, hey why don't you three try to seduce him if the situation gets dire, we can have a chance to survive, because I can feel that he can kill me without any problem. All the girls looked at him with a weird expression, but then looked at Tetsaya, and then the one who had slightly purplish hair said, I don't mind he is both strong and handsome. The other two looked at her, and the black-haired lady sighed and said, I can agree on that, but you sure never change Freya. Already eyes on a strong person even without knowing anything about him. The silver-haired lady who was standing beside Zardin said, How can you accept something like this so easily Freya-sama, Hela-sama, you will have to marry him are you sure about that? The black-haired lady looked her hella looked at the silver-haired woman and said, it is because of your this attitude that you still didn't find a boyfriend for yourself Rosewise, you are too serious. The one named Rosewise got shocked and crouched down on the floor and started crying and said, hey it's not my fault, I want a boyfriend as well. Uwaya Aden looked at her and said, then my virgin assistant it is your chance now to get one for yourself. He is both handsome and strong, and seeing that he is this strong he must be quite successful as well. Roseweiss then looked at Tetsaya and stopped crying and said, what you said is true, but the fact that he already have girlfriends is the issue. I don't want a womanizers like him. Hearing her Aden said, our likes are at stakes here, and you are thinking about your ideals. Because of this you are still single. Roseweiss who heard that again crouched down and started crying. 
Tetsuya who has charged his attack and both Rita and Stormbreaker held both the axes just above his head and started to combine their powers. And once he was done he swung his axes and said, Solar Storm, and then very hot bolts of lightning started to fall on the frost giants and fire demons which even disintegrated their bodies, not even leaving a trace of their bodies. Within a blink of an eye the whole army of giants which were standing in front of them were completely obliterated, which made Odin sure that the young man in front of him could kill all of them in an instant. Titsayat then glared back at Odin's group and asked, so do you want to surrender, or we surrender, and all of them raised their hands, showing that they really surrendered. Titsaya nodded his head and said, good. Titsaya looked at all of them once more, and after confirming that they were not planning anything shady, he made his axes disappear. Titsaya then used his magic to bind all of them and said, now quickly answer me, who are you and what is your business in this town? The group who was bound by Titsaya were a bit angry as all of them were gods in their mythology, except Roseweiss, and him treating them so casually was something that none even dared to do. Still all of them contained their anger, and then old man said, well we are from the Asgard, and I am Odin, the godfather of Asgard, and I will like to apologize for all the trouble we have caused to you, those frost giants and fire demons came after us after confirming that I will be out of Asgard for a while, and came to kill me. Tetsaya stared at him for a while, which made them think whether he was observing them to know whether they were lying or not. What Tetsaya was actually doing was using his telepathy to know the truth, and after learning the truth he looked at Odin and the others with a weird look on his face and said. Don't tell me you are the pervert that Azazel mentioned about earlier and asked me to make arrangements? Hearing that all of them were shocked. They didn't even expect it that the person they came to meet was standing in front of them. Odin immediately nodded his head and said, yes that crow told me that he has made a reservation under his own name. Tetsaya then narrowed his eyes and said, but aren't you quite late for dinner, and you even brought an army with you, how can I believe that you didn't came to attack the town? And started releasing his aura making all them having trouble to breathe and crouch down on the ground. Odin then somehow managed to look at Tetsaya and said, I swear on my divinity and my title as the godfather of Asgard that I didn't have any intentions of war, I only came to have a taste of that liquor and visit some strip clubs. Titsaya and the others were dumbfounded by his answer, and Titsaya then undid their restraints and then said, you really are a pervert. Anyway you guys clean the mess that you have created all over the town first, and why the hell is that lady over there breathing so heavily? Everyone looked towards the purple-haired lady and saw her having a flushed face and breathing heavily. Hela looked back at Titsaya and said, don't worry she is just having some lewd thoughts about you. Titsaya looked back at her and said, are all the gods in Asgard perverts? Hela then smirked and said, well, technically our realm is called Asgard. Titsaya who heard that was speechless and just looked at her with a deadpan expression. The muscle many seemed to have gotten a bit angry and said, hey don't bad mouth Asgard you mortal. Titsaya looked at him and said, she was the one who said that so tell her that not me. And what are you all waiting for get to cleaning the mess immediately? We don't have all day. Ada nodded and then looked at the silver haired lady and said, Rose Weiss if you may. The silver haired lady nodded and said, yes Aden Sama. And then a lot of magic circles started to appear all over the sky and started to restore all the damaged areas. Titsaya looked at the magic circles and widened his eyes and said, though you may not be strong your control over magic is great. I have never seen someone able to control these many magic circles at once. The lady who suddenly heard the praise looked at Titsaya and said, really do you think this is great? Ahh I am so happy no one has praised me for my ability to since the time I became a Valkyrie. Aden Sama did you hear that? Aden looked at Rose Weiss and said, yes yes I heard that now get back to work. And Rose Weiss immediately started working again, but this time she had a smile on her face. Titsaya then looked at them and asked, now what will you be doing now? Aden looked at him and said, what? Like I told you we came for the liquor so definitely we will be going to drink. Titsaya looked at him and asked, what time do you think it is that the shop will be open? Suddenly realization hit him and he then said, hey young man won't you let me have the drink to this old man? I traveled a very long distance to get that drink. Titsaya looked at him for a while and then said, I will be charging five times the usual rate for inconveniencing me. 
Aden shouted, that's straight up extortion Tatsaya calmly said, deal with it or go back. Aden kept gritted his teeth and finally said, fine, but make sure that you give your best stuff. Tatsaya smirked and said, don't worry about the quality, just think whether you will be able to handle it or not. Aden and Thor smirked, don't challenge an Asgardian when it comes to drinking. Tatsaya nodded and said, good, well let me introduce myself I am Tatsaya Shiba, nice to meet you. All of them nodded and said, let me introduce us as well. Like I said before I am Aden, and this here is my son Thor. Hey there I am Hela and this person who was Javi G lewd thoughts just a moment ago is hello my name is Freya. If you ever need to release some stress make sure to come to me. You will feel that you are in heaven. The silver haired lady who seemed to have finished her work and said, I am Rosewise, assistant of Aden Sama. It's a pleasure to meet you. Tatsaya nodded and then brought all of them to his restaurant and started working on their order. After that the whole group of Aden decided to have the same drink, and to Tatsaya's surprise, the one who was able to last the longest was Rose Weiss who though was conscious, but did the most embarrassing things while she was drunk. She even proposed Tatsaya after Tatsaya comforted her when she told her horrible working conditions with Aden. Tatsaya also recorded the whole record the whole thing that she did after being drunk and decided to use it to tease her in future. Underworld? The Gremory territory currently the whole Gremory mansion is in an uproar and is being decorated for the celebration of Rhea's first win in the raiding game. And despite a lot of them were happy for her there was one person who was not happy with the current situation. In one of the rooms of the Gremory mansion, one could see that the whole room is filled with rubble consisting of broken furniture, showpiece, bottles etc., and a man wearing white clothes with red hair could be seen sitting in one corner of the room. This person is none other than the current head of the Gremory family, Zeotific Cough Cough Zeoticus Gremory. Zeoticus who has kept his eyes closed, massaged his temple and said, how the hell did all this happen? I did make sure that there were no problems with this marriage, and then decided to let her participate in that raiding game to only look like a good father. I thought that an amateur will not be able to defeat a seasoned player and a phoenix at that. I underestimated her no, I underestimated her peerage. I didn't knew that they were so strong, and the red dragon emperor is in her peerage all this were not in my equation. Now all my plans to make a direct connection with the phoenix is completely ruined. He then punched the wall beside him causing a crack in the wall. He then sighed and said, well what's done is done, that daughter of mine is now out of her marriage that she wanted from so long, let's congratulate her later as a good father. I should now make plans for what to do now. Well let's see many devil families will still be willing to marry her. Let's try to set her up with some high class devil family as a reward for her performance in the raiding game. I am sure many of the influential devil houses will like to be a part of the Gremory family. I just need to see which house will benefit us the most. He then showed a malicious smile, but it immediately changed to a normal one, and then he left the room. Time skip? Later that day in the evening a lot of people dressed in formal clothing could be seen inside the Gremory mansion. Serzaches who was watching all of them from the side and had a smile and thought, all these people came here just to butter up the Gremory house. And after knowing that Rhea Tan's engagement will be broken tonight many of the young devils are now aiming for her. Seriously these horny males, don't they know that Rhea Tan promised to marry her on Yi Chan when she was young? Ah, all this thinking is making me frustrated. He then took out the pendant he was wearing and opened it, and the pendant revealed a photo of a woman in it. Serzaches started at the picture for a while, and a small smile appeared on his face. He then thought, Iris would have surely scolded me for having all these unnecessary thoughts, and would ask me to do my duties diligently, if I had time to think all that. He then kept on looking for a while when suddenly he felt someone tugging his robe. He closed the pendant and looked at the one who tugging his robe and smiled. What happened? Feeling bored Milikas? Milikas nodded his head and then said, let's go father, I am getting bored. Serzaches smiled and held his hand and said, then let's go and find what your grandmother and my sister is doing. And both of them left the room. In another room of Gremory Mansion. Rias and her peerage along with Venelana were in the room dressed up and were waiting for the event to begin. Rias who was sitting on the sofa stretched her hands and said, finally, I am finally free from this forced marriage. Now I don't have to marry him. 
Her peerage looked at her and all thought, she sure is very happy even after the game ended like that. Then Alana looked at her daughter and said, don't be too happy yet, after your engagement is officially annualed, there would be a ton of devil houses who would like to marry you, and if your father finds someone suitable, then you could be soon engaged again. Hearing that Rhea's expression changed and she looked at her mother and said, mom don't think negatively about such matter. And even if I am engaged again I will get out of it just like I did with this engagement. Then Alana shook her head and said, this time I don't think that you will get a chance to fight a raiding game. You only got a chance this time because the engagement was made before you were even born, and now you who is mature enough will have to take the engagement seriously as the heiresses of the Gremory house. Even though I am still against all this I cannot stop your father if he takes a decision like he did with Riser. Rias who heard her mother was shocked and didn't know what to do. She then said, then what if I say to them that I have a boyfriend will they still be able to make me go through all this again? At this everyone in the room perked up and Venelana asked, there is a chance that you will not be made to go through all that again, but that depends on the status of your boyfriend. Rias who heard that puffed her chest and said, there is no problem with that I will tell that Tatsaya is my boyfriend, no one will dare to question his status after all even Ani Sama thinks highly of him. Everyone in the room got surprised at her announcement and were left speechless. But suddenly the door of the room opened and revealed Serzich's and Milika's. Serzich's then looked at them and said, I heard what you all were talking about, and in my opinion this idea will not work for two reasons. 1. Even though I think highly of him and he indeed lives up to my respect he is but still a human, and no matter what devils will never think highly of him. 2. Tatsaya himself will deny of you being her girlfriend if he is asked whether you tack are in a relationship or not. He don't like troublesome things at all. Sudden two people came from the door, and everyone looked at them and saw Sona and Tsubaki standing there. Sona then shifted her glasses and said, 3. There is also the fact that you have to convince his whole harem about your relationship which is actually a very difficult task, and I am saying this from experience. Tsubaki looked at Sona and thought, only if they knew his actual thoughts this idea would not have even came to their minds. Well whatever it's not my problem, I am in a relationship with him, and that's only matter to me whether she marries some old fart or a newborn is her problem. Asami also nodded her head on Sona's comment and said, what president is saying is true, even I am not yet accepted by all of them. Rias who heard looked at them and said, don't worry he will fall for my charm easily. At this everyone in the room looked at her with a deadpan expression and thought, how much overconfident can she be? Milikas looked at Trias and thought, even I know that Trias 1e Sama is not Tatsaya Nai's type. Kiba looked at his king and thought, if either Tatsaya or I were people who get in relationship with a girl just by her looks, then the whole school would be under our control. Grafiad then came to the room and then said, the members of the Phoenix family have arrived, Serzich's Sama, Ria's Sama, Venelana Sama Master has asked for your presence. All of them nodded and Ria's looked at Akeno and said, let's go Akeno. Akeno nodded and started following them. Soon the Gremaries along with Akeno and Grafia reached the room and saw a blonde man and woman standing along with Ziotikus. All of them approached them and bowed a button Serzich's said with a bow, I hope that you are doing well Lord and Lady Phoenix. We are doing fine, thanks for asking Serzich's Sama. Venelana then looked at Jessica, Lady Phoenix, and did a curt nod which she returned as well. Ziotikus then said, well they have come to annul the marriage contract between Rias and Riser. Rias then looked around the room and asked, Riser is not here? Lord Phoenix looked at her and said, no, my son didn't come here, he had some matters to attend to. But don't worry he have already signed the required documents. Rias nodded and thought, he must be too ashamed to face the others and smiled a little. Meanwhile at Riser's location. Riser cannot believe that Riser lost to someone who have never participated in a raiding game. Suddenly he felt someone place a hand on his shoulder, and then he heard a voice, now now, the morning period is over. Grab a drink and let's celebrate. Riser nodded and held a glass of wine and said, to the annulment of Riser's marriage. To the annulment of your marriage. And everyone in the room took a sip of their drinks. Riser then looked at the person who placed his hand on him and said, Riser will like to thank you all to come to Riser's small party. Tatsaya-san, Sarayarg-san, Agar-san. 
All three of them nodded their heads and Tatsaya said, No problem you are holding a party at my place, it only benefits me, and I called these two as well, or it would have been boring. Sarayarg then looked at Riser and said, It should be me who should thank you for inviting me, though I am surprised that you are not grieving on your loss and annulment of your marriage. Didn't you want to marry my cousin Rias very badly? Riser snorted and said, Who would be happy to be bound in a marriage contract with someone they don't even know? Riser was only pushing her to marry me because it was Riser's duty as a member of Phoenix family. Even though Riser is not a heir Riser still takes his duties seriously. And what should Riser grieve about, it only benefits Riser. Riser can go back to live his life peaceful, not studying about how to lead the house Riser would be marrying to. Riser is completely free from all that. Sikvera then looked at him and asked, but don't you feel bad, you could have become the head of house of Gremory in future. You would have gained a lot of wealth and authority. Riser waved his hand and said, too troublesome. Riser is earning enough from both his business and the raiding games, and can easily support Riser's harem, and that's all Riser cares about. Having more authority will only increase Riser's work. Riser wants to live freely not with these troublesome things. Sarayarg who heard that sight and said, I can't understand that both you and Tatsaya have power, but both of you don't want any authority and only wants to fool around. Both Tatsaya and Riser looked at Sarayarg and said simultaneously, hey what is wrong with living a life like that? Instead of getting involved with all that shit I Riser thinks my Riser's way is better. And both of them fist bumped. Tatsaya then looked at Sarayarg and Sikvera and asked, Anyway is it really fine for both of you to be here and not attend the Gremory's party, especially you Sarayarg after all she is your cousin. Both of them shook their heads, and Sikvera said, I have no problem, I have told my parents that me and my peerage are going to exterminate some rouges on the request of the Archduke. Sarayarg then said, No problems with me either I have told mother that me and my peerage have some work to do. Besides didn't I promise earlier you have much more priority in my eyes than the devils. How could I refuse when you were the one who invited me? Tatsaya smiled in Sarayarg's answer and said, Then let's drink tonight till we are wasted on the celebration of annulment of Riser's engagement. Riser looked at Tatsaya and said, You took the words out of Riser's mouth Tatsaya-san. Sarayarg looked at Tatsaya and said, Oi, are you even allowed to drink alcohol? Tatsaya looked at Sarayarg and said, Sarayarg let's compete who can drink more. When Sarayarg heard the word compete he forgot all about age restrictions and started gulping down the bottle in front of him, and so did all the boys of his peerage. The girls looked at the boys and said, seriously these boys and their antics. And rest of the girls nodded their heads in approval. Underworld? In Gremory's mansion. All the documents concerning Rhea's marriage annulment were signed, and all of them were in the hall attending the party. Venelana, Miss La and Jessica were standing with each other and were talking when suddenly Venelana asked, Hey, why I don't see your children and their peerages here, now that I think about it, Sikvera Chan is also not present. Miss La looked at Venelana and said, Sarayarg said that he had somewhere to go and would not be able to come. Jessica said, Riser said the same thing as well, but what I am surprised about is that Ravel was also very excited to go with him. Suddenly all three of them realized something and said, all three of them are absent, don't tell me they all are where I think. Miss La then formed magic circle and called Kusha. Suddenly a small projection of Kusha appeared in Miss La's hand. Kusha looked at Miss La and the other two and bowed her head and asked, is there some problem Miss La Sama? Miss La shook her head and said, nothing like that. I wanted to ask you where you guys currently at. At this Kusha's body became stiff, and she averted her eyes and was about to make an excuse when suddenly. Hey who gave alcohol to Miyuki she is drunk now. Hey Miyuki don't tear my clothes. Ani sama, let's make kittens. Why the hell are you talking like Garoka? Kaya, Tatsaya sama cover yourself first. You fool take as many pictures as possible it is a very rare and magnificent sight. Riser cannot believe it, how big are you Tatsaya san? I cannot win against you in this no matter how much I train. Don't worry Sarayarg sama you are not the only one. We know how you feel. Hey Seek Chan send those photos to me as well. Miss La then ended the call and looked at the other ladies, and of them nodded at each other. Venelana then said, Grafia we are going somewhere don't forget to take a camera. 
Greyfield then said, Don't worry Venalana-sama I have already prepared all the things we will be needing for our trip. And all four of them teleported somewhere. Right when the whole chaos was going on the door of the room opened and the Norse mythology group came. Odin whose eyes were closed waved his hand said, Thanks a lot young man I couldn't believe that I passed out for a whole day because of alcohol. He then opened his eyes and just when he opened his eyes, they widened in shock. He then rubbed his eyes as if thinking that what he was seeing was not real. He then looked at Thor and said, Will you pinch me? Thor shrugged his shoulder and did as he was told. Ouch Odin then rubbed the spot where he was pinched and then said with a huge smile on his face. This is real, I cannot believe this, lolis twins from risers peerage, op i loli ravel, big titted one e sams, milfs, cat eared ladies. Fuck Asgard this is the true paradise for me. Now we just need a maid, and the whole collection will be complete. Just as he said that a magic circle appeared in the room and Venalana and the others appeared in the room. Odin looked at Grafia and then said, Now I must have used all the good luck I possess. I can finally die in peace. Suddenly a hand was placed on his shoulder and he heard a voice. Oh I will be more than happy to kill you right now, you old bastard. Odin turned his head and saw Hela looking at him with a smile on her face, but the aura that she was releasing was saying something entirely different. Odin gulped and said, Well let's have a drink and then leave. Che, damn hag. Suddenly Hela's grip tightened and she said, you thought of something rude, didn't you? Odin started to sweat a bit and he said, ww whatever you mean? Hela smiled and said, you are dead and punched him on the face sending him flying away and crashing into the wall. Hela then sighed and looked around the room to see what was happening and saw that everyone was looking at them intently. She ignored their gazes, but suddenly she stopped looking around and started to look intently at something, she didn't move her gaze away and asked, Hey Freya, are you also looking at that? Freya who had a flushed face said, What else is there to look in this room besides that? That is too big for a man of his stature. Everyone who heard their conversation followed their gazes where those two were looking and the girls in the room immediately blushed. While the boys suddenly got depressed. Odin who came out of the wall, looked around the room and was confused, and his gaze then fell on Thor, who was crouching in one corner while mumbling, his hammer is bigger than mine. Odin was well confused and then saw everyone looking at the same direction. He too looked that way and his eyes widened in shock. He too then sat beside Thor and started mumbling, his spear is longer than mine. Kurumi who saw the condition of the people smirked and said, even gods cannot compare to Tsaya Ha. Tetsaya who was now being started at felt awkward and then covered his Excalibur with his hands. Click suddenly the sound was heard by all and Tetsaya looked at the direction from where the sound came and saw Grafia holding a camera in her hand. Tetsaya looked at her for a while and asked, Uwak what are you doing? Nothing of your importance. Don't mind me and continue what you were doing earlier. She then paused for a while and then said, Can you move your hands away, it's blocking the view. Tetsaya was dumbfounded by her answer and looked around the room and saw every girl in the room looking at her and thought, why are there so many Freyas in the room? He then snapped his finger, and then he was again covered in clothes, making all the girls grunt in displeasure. He then looked at the Norse group and asked, you guys are still here? Hela then said, we decided to thank you for taking care of us after we were passed out. Freya then said, but I didn't thought of receiving such a treat on coming here. Tetsaya ignored her comment and then looked at Venalana's group and asked, and why are you all here? Didn't you have to attend your daughter's celebration party? Venalana looked at him and said, we did attend that, but when we came to know that there was an event going on here, we decided to come here instead. Tetsaya then asked, what kind of event did you think was going on here? Before any of them could answer Kurumi said, what else, they must have thought that an orgy is going on here. At this all the girls in the room except for the older ones blushed. Freya then looked around the room and said, seeing the condition of the other males and in what situation Tetsaya was. It would be more appropriate to call reverse rape. At this their blush intensified more making them look like that they were about to faint. Kurumi then raised her hand and said, oh to thought of you who have not heard yet. There is an announcement that I have to make. At this most of ladies who were present there looked at her intently while some of them who knew what she was going to do sighed or glared at her. Kurumi then gave a fake cough and said, I have already claimed the throne. 
Most of the girls were confused on what Karumi said. Seeing their confused expression Karumi made a circle with he fingers in one hand and then started to use the middle finger of the other to make an action which looked like entering and leaving the circles with a sly grin on her face. All the ladies now understood what she was saying and then began glaring at her as well. Tetsuya was sitting in one of the chairs without bothering about what they were talking about and was silent drinking. After the declaration was made by Karumi, Miyuki came forward with a proud expression on her face, along with Himari and said, Karumi you are not the only one, we did that with Ani Sama Sama as well. Karumi then smirked and said, yeah I know I was watching the whole thing from inside him. I have to say, you two lost pretty easily. Tetsuya and I had a wilder night than yours. Hearing that Miyuki and Himari scowled and glared at Karumi, and then all of them started bickering. Tetsuya then noticed someone approach him and looked at the person and asked, what happened Freya, Hella? Both of them sat beside him and Freya said, if you want you can do it with us. Hella then said, and if you agree now, you get a Rosewise free. Rosewise who was standing behind them said, hey don't treat me like a freebie. Tetsuya then put his glass on the table and said, sorry, not interested. At his answer all three of them were surprised as they could not believe to deny them, even after Freya was using her seduction magic. Freya them said, you know not many people and a human at that would get a chance to have sex with a goddess, and two at that. You can still take up on the offer. Tetsuya just smiled and said, thanks for your concern, but my answer will not change. I am not a man who will do it someone that I don't love. At this all three of them widened their eyes and said, and what about that harem of yours? Tetsuya then said, hey I did say that not to those that I don't love. They all consist of people that I love, so they are fine. Rosewise looked at him and thought, even though he is womanizer he is not bad. Looks like I thought very wrongly of him. Both Hella and Freya then sighed and then said, whatever but do tell whenever you need some company in the bed. Suddenly they heard a cold voice which said, Ani Isama have much more people to accompany him than his bed can even handle. This creeped both of them, and they jolted back in surprise. Tetsuya then looked at Miyuki and said, don't scare them like that. And patted her head. Miyuki who was being patted was in bliss and met in response. Tetsuya's hands were then grabbed by someone, and he looked at the people holding them, and found Asia and Ingvald holding one each. He raised an eyebrow and then asked, what do you two want? Ingvald and Asia looked at each other and then nodded their heads and then said, please, let us accompany you in the night, the next time. Tetsuya didn't took much time and said, okay Ingvald then said, plea wait you already agreed. How? Tetsuya shrugged his shoulders and said, do you really believe that I think that any of you will stay silent after one of you did that? It only is a matter of time till you ask me yourself. So instead of postponing it, agreeing will be the correct way. Then us four after them. Said, Karen while pointing at the other three Nekashu around her making them all blush. Tetsuya nodded and said, done. The other girls in the room also wanted to ask him, but decided to stop as they don't have any intimate relationship with him. But then suddenly Grafia raised her hand and said in her usual cold tone, then I want a turn as well. All the girls looked at Grafia with a surprised expression, except the Norse girls, and Venelana and the other two looked at her as if she was a traitor. Tetsuya looked at her for a while and then said, well that was a little unexpected, but you have to take the permission of the others first. Grafia then said, understood, now then the ladies who are in a relationship with Tetsuya, please gather in an empty room immediately we have some things to discuss as soon as possible. And then opened the door. All the girls looked at her with a deadpan expression before following her out of the room. After all of them were gone Kusha came closer to Tetsuya and said shyly, I want to do it as well. Tetsuya looked at her and said, no problems go and discuss with them. After Kusha left the room as well there was silence filled in the room and everyone was looking at Tetsuya. Tetsuya looked back at them and said, what? If I don't agree with this, I am scared that I will become a rape victim. The people thought about what Tetsuya said for a while and then nodded their heads in understanding. They could imagine that it can happen in future. Underworld? Gremory Mansion Sona, Tsubaki and Surfall were feeling a bit odd and thought, why do I feel like that I am missing something important? In the morning Tetsuya is standing in front of the open door of his house with a red head standing just in front of him. 
Titsaya looked at her for a while and asked, what happened Riaz, why so early in the morning? Need something? Riaz shook her head and said, no, just wanted to vote a school along with you. Titsaya nodded and looked back inside and said, girls Gremory will be joining us on the way to school. Whatever, it doesn't matter. All of them said in unison. Titsaya shrugged his shoulders and then said, wait for a bit and then we will leave. Soon all of them came and Titsaya and the others left for the school. Along the way Sinan looked at Trias and asked, so how is your life after winning the game? We heard that you had a celebration on your win. Riaz looked at her and smiled, it has been good. No more fussing over engagement or being forced by the family. And yeah, we did celebrate. But you know there have been a lot of people who trying to set up a marriage with me. Seriously, it's so annoying. I even told them that I am interested in somebody else, but they are still not giving up. Ria said those words while glancing at Titsaya who did what any sane man would do, simply ignored her and kept on walking. All the girls looked at her and were trying to hold their laugh, and all of them thought, does she really think that she could make him jealous? Seriously redhead has too much overconfidence. Titsaya who was simply walking and then suddenly someone jumped on his back. Titsaya turned his head and said, good morning Asami. Looks like you are enthusiastic in the morning. Asami just smiled and gave him a peck on the lips. During these few days after the devils came back Asami's and Titsaya's got into relationship after Asami confessed to him. Though she thought that she would be rejected by others, but to her surprise even Miyuki allowed her to be with Titsaya rather easily. Titsaya himself didn't had any problem with that, as he had taken a linking to Asami during the time she used to train under him. He was quite happy himself as he was going to confess to her himself after the raiding game was over. Asami then got off from Titsaya's back and then looked at others and said, good morning everyone. Her gaze then fell on Riaz and she asked, what are you doing here Prez? Riaz just smiled and said, oh just joining them on the way to school. Ingvald then came closer to Asami and said, trying to seduce Titsaya. Asami who now heard the real reason nodded and then started to talk with the girls. Riaz then walked closer to Titsaya and asked, Hey Titsaya can we have the orc meeting at your house today? Titsaya didn't even looked at her and said, Why? This answer made her a bit surprised and she said, Please the clubhouse will be undergoing the annual cleaning. Titsaya then thought for a while and then said, Then it would be better to go to Asami's house. She can meet her parents as well like that. Riaz who heard that wanted to retort but couldn't as Titsaya's reasoning was right. Soon all of them reached the school and separated their ways. Later that day Titsaya and his group went directly to their homes without bothering the Gremory group. On the way Ingvald looked asked, why didn't you let them come to the house? You are not that strict to let someone not even enter it. Titsaya looked at her and then said, I don't have any problems if a person just wants to come and hang out. What I have a problem with is that if she found out about our training facilities, she would be bothering us too much. Do you think that a time chamber is something easily available? The gravity and climate manipulators along with all the things present there to make you all train for different circumstances is not something that can be easily found. All of them nodded and then silently went back home. At night Titsaya felt a familiar presence inside the town and decided to check. He then directly teleported to the location and found himself standing in a room with a lot of sofas and dim lighting. He then took a seat on the sofa and waited for a while, and soon a door opened, and came a man with black and blonde hair wearing a yukata. Titsaya looked at the man and asked calmly, what are you doing here in the town Azazel? Azazel was surprised by the voice and looked at Titsaya and asked, since when did you came here? A while ago. Azazel nodded and then took a seat on one of the sofas and said, well this town is peaceful, and I like the silence here. It's very relaxing. Titsaya looked at him with a deadpan expression and said, and what is the real reason? Azazel smirked and asked, whatever you mean, I am just a friendly neighborhood fallen angel. Titsaya snorted and said, more like a friendly neighborhood pervert and answer me seriously, why are you here? Azazel's face twitched and he said, hey man don't be like that. I just came here for some research. As he said that a magic circle appeared in the room, and soon Asami came out of it. Are you the one who summoned a devil? The Sami then looked at the people sitting in the room and found Titsaya along with Azazel in the room. Her eyes widened in surprise on seeing Titsaya, 
And she asked, at Titsaya. Are you the one who summoned me here? Titsaya simply glanced at Azazel in response to her question. Azazel looked at the two of them and said, wait, you two know each other? Both Titsaya and Asami nodded in response, and then Titsaya said, so what request do you have from my girlfriend? And gave a cold smile. Azazel who looked at Titsaya got a shiver run down his spine and said, nothing like that, I just wanted someone to accompany me while drinking. Titsaya just nodded his head and then said, and what about your research? Azazel then said, oh I heard that the wielder of the boosted gear is in this town, so I decided to check on her and try to take her under my wing. He then glanced at Asami who was still confused and said, but seeing that she is already a devil and your girlfriend as well, I guess that I already missed the opportunity. Titsaya looked at Azazel and said, well it was a fallen angel who killed her, so I guess you already lost the chance to even ask her. Azazel who heard that looked at Titsaya and said, seriously, man there has been a lot of rouges and traitors in the organization. This getting on my nerves. It is because of them that fallen angels have a bad name in the supernatural world. Titsaya then sat back comfortably and them said, anyway let's leave it at that. How far has your research progressed and how is the battle junkie? Azazel then summoned a bottle of whiskey and some glasses and poured him and Titsaya some. He then looked at Asami and asked, do you drink? Asami who just being ignored till now got surprised and said, no I don't. Titsaya then took out a can of cola and threw it at her and said, here. Asami caught the can and then looked at both of them and asked, is it fine for me being here? Titsaya waved his hands and said, just sit there for a while and drink after that your contract is complete and you can go. Asami nodded and then opened the can. Titsaya and Azazel then started their talk and after talking for a while Azazel then asked, hey what would you do about Vali? Because you must be knowing that there is no way that he will not fight that girl sitting there. Titsaya took a big sip and then said, I don't mind as long as they are fighting, but if the situation comes to Asami getting killed, then I will interfere. Besides if I just promise him that I will fight in her stead, then he will easily expect. Titsaya then had a smirk and then said, I also know some of his dark secrets, so he would be willing to accept my offer happily. Azazel looked at Titsaya and said, Hey I hardly believe that a battle junkie like him will yield to a threat like that. Titsaya smiled and said, Oh he will be more than willing to. After all it would better for him that others do not know that he have butt fetish. Titsaya then looked at the clock and said, Well it has become very late, I guess we should get going. Titsaya then looked at Azazel and said, now pay up for the contract. Azazel twitched his lips and said, how stingy can you be? Titsaya then said, hey, I am not revealing that the governor of the Grigori is in the town to the devils. It should be plenty enough. He then looked at Asami and then said, and make sure to not tell the others about this pervert. Asami only nodded and said, it doesn't matter. Seeing that he is on good terms with you, I can be assured that he don't have any ill intentions. Azazel then stopped grumbling and then pointed to a painting and said, how about this as a compensation? It is an original. Asami looked at Azazel and said, I am fine with that, but isn't that too expensive? Azazel shrugged his shoulders and said, this is the only thing that I have at the moment. Titsaya snorted and said, like hell the leader of a faction is short on money. Azazel's brows twitched and he said, anyway this is all I have the only other thing that I can give you is my soul. Asami then waved her hands and said, no no no, I didn't do anything to get your soul as compensation. Titsaya then moved towards Azazel and said, sure why not? And removed the astral body from his human body psyche's power, and immediately Azazel's body blanked out. Azazel who was in his astral form looked at his body and said, did you really extract my soul? Titsaya looked at him with a neutral expression and said, yeah he then looked at his own astral body and saw that he could see through it. He then tried to grab Titsaya but was unable to. His eyes then fell on Asami who was trying to wake his flesh body up and said, oi girl, can't you see me? Titsaya looked at him no one can see you or hear you if you are in that form. Azazel was surprised by that and then started thinking something and said, then can't I stay in the ladies bath without getting caught? He then looked at Titsaya and said, Titsaya let's go to a bathhouse right now. Titsaya looked at him with a deadpan expression, and after signing said, I cannot believe that you can think something good out of this. 
Azazel grinned and then said, I always look at the positive aspects of everything. No you look at the perverted aspects of everything. Azazel shrugged his shoulder and said, that comes in positive aspect as well. Titsaya then sighed and then combined his astral and flesh body and took Asami along with him. See you later and don't cause trouble. And left his apartment along with Asami. After both Asami and Titsaya left Azazel's place, Asami started asking questions about Azazel and Titsaya started to explain her about the fallen angels in Grigori. Soon Asami got a call from Rias regarding a stray devil in the town, and Asami and Titsaya parted ways. Titsaya who was now alone decided to take a long way home, as he wanted to travel a bit after drinking with Azazel, and started walking aimlessly around the town. After half an hour of walking it started to rain, but Titsaya used his psychic powers to make the water droplets bounce of his body. Seeing that it was raining heavily, Titsaya decided to go home as others might get worried. On his way he heard a voice which he concluded to be clash between swords and decided to check the area using magic. But just as he used it he confirmed it to be Kiba and ran towards the location. Just as he reached there he saw Kiba and a stray priest which he thought to be freed were fighting. He then came forward and asked, what's going on here? Both Kiba and Freed got alert by the voice and looked at Titsaya. Kiba widened his eyes and said, Titsaya what are you doing here? Just taking a stroll, didn't expect to fight you here. So who is that guy, your friend? Kiba shook his head and said, no this person standing here is Freed Selzen, a rouge priest. Titsaya looked at Freed and said, nice to meet you. Titsaya shibbed at your service. Freed looked at Titsaya weirdly for a while and then said, um hello, I guess. Freed was then suddenly hit by realization, and he pointed his sword at Titsaya and said, Hey it is not the time to introduce ourselves, what are you doing here? You know what just leave it, I will just slice you apart as well. Titsaya looked at Freed and asked, What happened man, why so angry? Someone stepped on you dick or what? Freed gritted his teeth and then said, You, forget it you will die first. Titsaya then looked at Kibbit and asked, You cut his dick or what? Kiba shrugged and said, no he is just like that? Titsaya nodded and then asked, want me to deal with him? Kiba then gripped his sword tightly and said, no, I request you to not interfere, there are some debts that I have to clear with that sword. Titsaya then looked at the sword in Freed's hands and said, oh it's one of those Excalibur pieces huh? Well go ahead, be my guest. Kiba nodded and said, thanks. Freed who heard them laughed maniacally and said, what happened shithead? got scared of my Excalibur Chan. Titsaya then looked at Freed and said, I have an Excalibur down there as well, and you know, girls love it. Freed became a big pissed on seeing that Titsaya wasn't the slightest bit scared and then said, let's stop talking and start slashing. Kiba became serious and said, yeah, let's go. Holy, eraser. And black beams started to originate from Kiba's sword and attack Freed. Freed simply blocked the attack with his sword, and then the sword started to emit holy aura. Freed then looked at Kiba and said, that will not work on my Excalibur Chan, Devil Kun. Kiba gritted his teeth and then ran towards Freed and started slashing at Freed. Freed continued to laugh maniacally, and then parried all of Kiba's slashes. Titsaya observed their fight and thought, that sword must be Excalibur rapidly. That must be the reason, why Freed is able to fight at Kiba's speed. They kept on fighting for a while, with none gaining advantage over the other. Both of them were pretty tired, but suddenly Freed found an opening and slashed Kiba on the arm. Kiba then took a step back and groaned in pain. Freed then licked his lips and said, stings a lot right devil cun. Oh I feel so great. Titsaya looked at Freed and said, why, someone penetrated you from behind or what? Hearing that Freed got out of his own world and glared at Titsaya and said, just you wait shithead, I will deal with you once I kill the Vilkan. And started running towards Kiba. Kiba who was injured, decided to block the attack. But noticed that he won't be on time, because of his injury. Just as Freed was about to attack Kiba Titsaya said, oh man, you stepped on dog shit. Yuck. Freed immediately stopped his hand and looked down and lifted his foot. Titsaya saw that and said, Kiba now. Kiba nodded and slashed at Freed. Freed who noticed the attack coming towards him jumped away and then said, hey, that's not fair. Titsaya just looked at him without any expression and said, yeah I know. Freed then said, it's a two against one. 
Tetsuya with the same expressionless face said, and so is a threesome. But they don't complain, do they? Both Freed's and Kiba's lips twitched and Freed said, this example is irrelevant here. Tetsuya nodded his head and said, I know. Freed gritted his teeth and again took his stance to fight, but suddenly a magic circle appeared near his ear, and Freed's eyes widened. He then looked at Tetsuya and Kiba and said, looks like you live a bit longer, devil kun, shithead. Someone is calling me. And then threw something on the ground and the whole area illuminated in a blinding light. Freed put his sword on his waist and ran away, but what he failed to notice was that Tetsuya already taking his sword and storing it in his storage. Tetsuya then came back to his position before the light died down. He then looked at Kiba and said, well there he goes, so wanna tell me your story? Kiba sighed and then said, let's find a shelter first. It is raining quite heavily. Tetsuya nodded and both of them then entered an apartment which seemed to be Kiba's house. Tetsuya has already informed the others that he would be staying at Kiba's place for the night, as he had something to discuss with him. Kiba and Tetsuya then dried themselves up and then sat down facing each other. Tetsuya looked at Kiba and Kiba was looking down on the floor. Tetsuya waited for him to speak, but noticing him he sighed and said, listen I am not forcing you to speak up, if you don't want to then I won't force you, but if you tell me there might be a way that I can help you. Kiba then looked at Tetsuya with a determined expression and then said, I will tell you. And then started telling about the Holy Sword project and his life. After he was done Tetsuya looked at him and said, you have gone through a lot. Kiba sighed and said, yeah Tetsuya then patted on his shoulder and said, don't worry everything is fine now. Tetsuya then became serious and said, but do you think that your way of taking revenge is right? Kiba became surprised by his question and then asked, what do you mean by that? Tetsuya then said, what I mean to say is that, do you think that everything will be solved if you destroy all those great name, works lame swords? Kiba was a bit confused by what Tetsuya said, and seeing that Tetsuya sighed and then said, just think about it, like you someone destroyed the original Excalibur, and then its pieces were used to make new Excaliburs. So, if you were to destroy the sword again, there is a chance that they can recreate them or worse, they can even make more swords with the new fragments, and to choose wielders for those fragments, a new holy sword project will start, and many children will suffer again. Do you really want that? After hearing Tetsuya's explanation Kiba started to hesitate about his revenge. Seeing the conflicted expression on Kiba's face Tetsuya said, I am not asking you to forget about your revenge, what I am asking you is to change the method of your revenge. Kiba immediately looked at Tetsuya intently, waiting for answer. Tetsuya then said, how about killing the one who started the Holy Sword project, Valper Galilei. After all he was the one who made you and your friends suffer, right? Killing him will lessen the chances of another holy sword project as well. Kiba remained silent for a while and then said, I will think about it. Right now my head is in a mess. Tetsuya nodded and then said, take your time, there is no rush, you have the whole night to think about it. Tetsuya said with a smile on his face. Kiba twitched his lips and said, isn't that much time too less? Dr. Tetsuya nodded and said, I know that it is less, but as you have seen, that maniac Freed had an Excalibur in his hands. How do you think a stray priest will be allowed to pause as a one of the Excaliburs? Kiba who heard that got surprised and started thinking about what Tetsuya said. He then said, yeah, now that I think about it, it is definitely weird for that priest to have that sword, it's as if Tetsuya then said, someone from the inside is helping him, and from what I know only people with certain authority will be allowed near Excaliburs like Kiba, then seemed to realize something and said, people from the Holy Sword Project. They were allowed to take Excaliburs to test on us to know if anyone was worthy. Tetsuya then said, that's right, I believe something big is about to happen, and seeing that the maniac with Excalibur was here, I can feel that this town is going to be the center of the events. He then sighed and said, why are they aiming this town, can they be happy on letting me relax? Kiba showed a wry smile and then said, don't worry we will go through everything together like bros along with the others. And moved his fist forward. Tetsuya looked at him and bumped his fist and said, yeah, like bros. Tetsuya and Kiba's stomachs then growled earning a wry smile from both of them. Tetsuya then stood up and said, I will fix something up. Kiba then sat back more comfortably and said, yeah, and make sure to make plenty. 
Titsaya looked at Kiba and said, Isn't this the time where you say let me help as well or no no, I will cook or something. Kiba shrugged his shoulders and said, I know how delicious your food is, why would I want to deny such a humble offer? Titsaya sighed and said, bastard, and then went to the kitchen to cook. The next day Titsaya woke up early and decided to go to his house first before going to school, but just as he woke up he felt a certain presence and a smile appeared on his face, and he thought, so she finally came huh. He then got refreshed, left a note to inform Kiba on the table, and then left Kiba's house. Just as he opened the door of the house, he was welcomed by a blur which he caught unconsciously and lifted up. The blur turned out to be Miyuki and Tetsuya smiled and said, good morning Miyuki. And hugged her. Miyuki hugged him back and then sniffed him and said, you don't smell of a girl, so you really were at Kibasan's house. Tetsuya then let her go and asked, yup I was really at Kiba's place, but I didn't think that you would suspect me, you know that really hurts. Miyuki then hugged him back and said, it's not like that on Isama, I do trust you, but for some reason I have a feeling that some bitch will be coming close. Tetsuya who heard her had a sweat drop and thought, is this the so-called woman's intuition? She already felt that she is in town. Tetsuya then patted her back to calm her down, and then after a while both of them separated, and both went inside the house to do their own work. Later that day on the way to school they met Riaz and Asami, and Riaz stopped the group and asked, hey has any of you seen Yudo? All of them looked at Tetsuya and said, this guy was at his place last night so ask him. Tetsuya looked at his group and said, don't speak like that or the others will misunderstand. He then looked at Riaz and said, and yes last night I was at his place. He had quite a lot on his mind so to see that he do not do anything rash, I decided to look over him. Riaz nodded her head and said, thanks a lot, I was very worried after he left off without telling me anything. Titsaya looked at Riaz for a while and then thought, though she is an overconfident idiot, she still cares for her peerage. Titsaya then nodded and said, mention not, he is my friend as well. All of them then started walking towards the school while talking to each other when suddenly Riaz said, oh yeah, we will be having some guests in the club room after the school is over. Asami looked at her and asked, guests? Is it something like your marriage again? Riaz shook her head and said, no, nothing like that two members of the church are coming to meet us. Apparently they have some work in our territory. Just as she said that, the atmosphere around them started to get cold, and all of them looked at Miyuki. Miyuki who just heard the information thought, guests from church bitch. She then started laughing which give the creeps to whoever saw her, and she then said, so she finally shows up huh, now I know why I had this feeling since yesterday. Titsaya then patted her head to calm her down, and the atmosphere turned back to normal. She then looked up and saw Titsaya smiling at her, and she then realized, Ani Isama you already felt her presence, don't you? Titsaya shrugged his shoulders and said, well yeah after all she she still has the necklace that I gave her, so I sensed her presence this morning as soon as I woke up. Miyuki then asked, then why didn't you inform me that she was back on town? Titsaya just smiled and said, well, I thought that you would be more surprised if you see her directly, and it would be more fun to watch your reaction. And just continued to smile. All of them around both of them were confused about what both of them were talking about. Titsaya and Miyuki noticed their stares, and Titsaya asked Miyuki, should we tell them? Miyuki thought for a while and said, nah, just let them be. They will meet soon anyways. Both of them nodded and again started walking towards the school, leaving behind a group of girls complaining to them about not telling what they were talking about. Later at the end of the day Titsaya and the others were in the orc clubhouse, Kiba was there as well, and all were silently sitting on the sofas with Titsaya and his group in the corner, and the Gremory group in the center, waiting for the guests to come. Soon the door of the club room opened and two people wearing white robes came inside. The two people who came were girls one having chestnut brown hair tied in twin tails and the other with short blue hair, with a streak of green in them. Both of them then took their seats facing Ria's. The chestnut-haired girl then looked at Tetsaya, and soon as if she remembered something she jumped from her seat and immediately came towards Tetsaya and hugged him and said, Tetsaya, I missed you so M-U-C-H Tetsaya hugged her back as well and said, I missed you as well Irina. How have you been? Irina then separated herself from Tetsaya and looked at him and said, I have been well, but what are you doing here? 
Titsaya was about to answer, but Miyuki beat him to that and said, is that even a question, it should be easily understandable why we are here. Looks like you are just as stupid as before. Irina then looked at Miyuki and said, and I see you have just the same sharp tongue like the old days Miyuki. Both of them were smiling, but everyone could see some sparks clashing between them. Miyuki then became neutral and said, anyway it's nice to meet you again, I guess. Oh and we are here because we are also a part of the supernatural, just so your small brain could not have realized it yet. Arena continued to smile and said, oh no no, I understand. Her gaze then fell on Asami and she asked, are you Asami? It's been a long time. Asami looked at her in disbelief and said, you, you can't be Shidu, Shidu was a boy not a girl like you. Arena then pouted a bit and said, says the one who matured even more than me. Asami was about to continue, but then the blue-haired girl interjected and said, Arena I think the work that we came for is more important. Arena nodded and then went back to her seat, and Sun did everyone else. Seeing that everyone was sitting Rhea said, nice to meet you I am Rhea's grammary. The blue-haired girl nodded and said, Zenovia Korda, and this here is my partner Arena then waved both her hands and said, H-E-L-L-O I am Arena Shidu, but some of you must already be knowing me. As she said her full name the other girls of Tetsuya's group suddenly realized something and said, oh you are the clingy bratty bitch. Miyuki has told us about you. It's nice to meet you. Irina's brows were twitching and she looked at Miyuki and said, looks like you told them a lot about me. Miyuki smiled and said, oh, not really, after all there wasn't much to tell them about some trash. Irina's lips were twitching, but she calmed herself down and said, don't become restless, it must be a trial that God has set up. Miyuki then placed a hand on her cheek and said, oh my, I didn't know that you regarded me as a god. Arena had veins popping out of her forehead, and she thought, I really want to slice her apart. Miyuki just continued to smile in response. Seeing that they were not about to stop any moment soon, Tetsuya decided to intervene and said, Miyuki stop that, can't you see they are here for some important business. Look at Cordis and she is itching to say something. At this all of them looked at Zenovia whose brows were twitching because of the commotion caused by the two girls. Miyuki then sighed and said, yes, Ani-sama I understand. Sorry Cordis and please tell us what you want to discuss. Zenovia looked at Tetsuya and gave an appreciative nod to which Tetsuya responded with a nod as well. Zenovia then said, thank you for arranging the time to speak with us. Rias kept a neutral expression and said, no no, you don't need to thank me. I also wanted to know what the followers of the god want from a devil like me. Irina then said, out of the six swords that were under the security of the church, three of them has been stolen by the fallen angels. This surprised most of the people standing in the room except for Kiba and Tetsaya, who already saw Freed wielding an Excalibur. Zenovia then said, out of the three remaining swords the ones we have are. She then lifted a huge sword covered in bandages and said, the holy sword of destruction Excalibur destruction. After that Arena took her hand out of her cloak, and while pointing at a thread tied around it said, and the holy sword of mimicry Excalibur mimic. After announcing about their swords they paused for a while thinking that everyone must be surprised on learning about their swords, but those who were shocked were a select few. Aside from Rias and her P.E.R.A.G. except for Asami, none of them were excited that much. Asami herself possessed a long inus and knew that how strong her sacred gear could get, and the weapons that Tetsaya's team possessed could easily outclass those holy swords. While this was going on Tetsaya looked at the holy sword with uninterested eyes and thought, this universe's Excalibur is not that much of a big deal. Sure, they may cause great damage to beings who are weak to holy element, but that's it. Nothing more than that, the specific ability that each holy sword gives the user is also not something of that importance, for instance I can consider Excalibur Transparency and Excalibur Ruler to be a great sword, but those effects could be gained by other magical tools as well. If I were to compare, my dick is a lot better than these swords. I can change the shape and size of my it, just like the Excalibur Mimunk, and if I were to thrust my dick once by removing half of the limiters on my body, I could at least level half of the town without any problem. I can even make it tougher than diamond using enhancement magic. Tetsuya then came out of his thoughts when Miyuki asked, hey is that thread your holy sword? Arena nodded her head and said, yeah this is my holy sword, it can turn into anything. 
Miyuki then said, then couldn't it be stolen too easily, they just have to bump into you and loosen the knot and boom boom the sword is lost. Irina was completely shocked by what Miyuki said and then looked at her arm and said, now that you mention it, what you said does seem to be true. She then thought for a while and said, then what should I turn this into, because any accessory could be taken easily by an expert pickpocket. Tetsuya looked at her with a neutral expression and said, then change it into a pair of panties and wear them. No chance of someone stealing or accidentally dropping it. The whole room fell silent, and Arena was blushing deeply while covering her face and said, how can you say those words in front of a pure soul like me? Everyone was looking at Tetsuya who looked back at them and said, what? It is the most threat-proof way. If you can give me a better idea then speak up. Everyone in the room looked at him for a while, and then Zenovia gave a fake cough to get everyone's attention back to her and then said, anyways what I want to say is that we don't want any interference of devils. It is a matter between the church and fallen angels. Hearing her words everyone in the room was shocked, and Ria's became slightly agitated. She then glared at Zenovia and said, is that an accusation, are you accusing us to be siding with the fallen? Zenovia glared back at Ria's and said, aren't the holy swords detestable to you as well, your intentions align well with them. Ria's got more angry at that and started releasing her demonic energy. Tetsuya looked at the scene in front of him and thought, what they are saying might be true, but they can also be accused to side with the fallen to take out the devils, after all all three factions are not currently in any form of alliance, and are hostile to each other, and among the three devils have the largest population because of reincarnated devils. Also the holy swords cause major damage to devils, rather than the fallen angels. Well let's keep our mouth shut here, we don't want to interfere in their businesses now, do we? Zenovia remained calmed even after Ria's was releasing her energy and said, if any of you were to interfere, we will annihilate you without any mercy. Even if you are the sister of Amayu. Tetsuya looked at Zenovia and thought, if she were to do that, forget the church even the heaven will be ruined by a cis Khan. Ria's then stopped releasing her demonic energy and said, if you know that much about me then let me tell you this. There is no way that I will align myself with the fallen angels. I will never do something that will tarnish the name of the house of Gremory or the Mayu. Zenovia then smirked and said, it's enough for me to hear that. I was just relaying the thoughts of those at the headquarters. Ria's then eased her expression a bit and said, then it should also be clear to you that I have no intentions of siding with you as well. Zenovia nodded her head and said, of course, it is enough for us that you promise to not interfere in anything that happen in this town. Ria's then thought for a while and then said, I understand. Zenovia and Arena then stood up and said, thank you for taking out time and listening to our request. Ria's then said, won't you have some tea before you go? Zenovia shook her head and said, no thanks, we are not here to make friends with devils. And started to leave along with Arena, but soon stopped on her tracks and looked in the direction of Tetsuya's group. She then said, I have been suspecting this since I entered to room, but aren't you Asia or Gento? Asia was a bit surprised by this and said, yes. Zenovia then narrowed her gaze and said, I didn't think I would meet a witch at a place like this. Asia became a bit surprised but only a bit, and then she regained her expression. Arena who now remembered who she was looked at Asia and said, oh you are the former saint who turned into a witch right? Yes. Arena then continued and said, I heard that you were banished fr the church, because you could heal fallen angels and devils, but I didn't expect you to side with the devils. Yes. Zenovia then said, but for the former saint to side with devils, you sure have fallen to the lowest you can. Asia didn't said anything, but Tetsuya and his team could feel that Asia was a bit pissed now. Zenovia who didn't felt anything said, do you still believe in God? Asia looked at her without any hesitation and said, yes, I still believe in God. Zenovia then closed her eyes and said, then let me execute you right here right now. Even if you have sinned God will still reach out his hand for forgiveness. At this Tetsuya and his whole group got pissed, and the girls were about to attack Zenovia, but before the situation got worse, Tetsuya came forward and said, Zenovia, right? Zenovia nodded her head in response, and Tetsuya then looked at her with a cold expression which sent a chill down on everyone's spine in the room and said, do you want to meet your so-called god so soon? And that concludes this episode. 
If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.